Bodine. Row 13 is Bobby Labonte, and with him the three-time winner this year, Randy LaJoy. Row 14 is Patty Moise, and with her, Mike Harmon. For row 15, Jeff Green is there with Tony Stewart, the Indy star, making his sixth Grand National start. Row 16 is Larry Pearson and Jimmy Spencer. Row 17, Jim Bound and Stevie Reeves. For row 18, Curtis Markham is there with Terry Labonte, the winner at Atlanta in March. Row 19, an all-rookie row, Mike Dillon and Glenn Allen. Row 20 is Jason Keller and Bobby Dodder, provisional starters, as well as row 21, Tim Fidoa and Mike Wallace. And Ken, there were some good names that failed to qualify for this race. You can see them there. Tommy Houston, who started more of these races than anyone else, and Buck Chot Jones, who has a win so far this year. And Dennis Setcher also has a couple of wins in the past, and not the field. Manufacturers breakdown on this event. Well, you can see, Ken, that Chevrolet is a car of choice. There's 28 of them, there's 11 Fords, and there's three Pontiacs. And of course, uh, Chevrolet's won the most races in this series so far this year. And the race analysis breaks down like this. $456,000 in the hopper, 42 cars to run for it, over 311 miles, 117 laps. And the race record belongs to Schrader at 167 plus. And the track dimensions, DW. Yeah, you know, we talk about how big this racetrack is, 4,000 feet down that long back straightaway. It's got two degrees of banking into those 33 degree banks where they hit about 200 miles an hour. And then your front straightaway is 4,300 feet long. This trial is banked at 18 degrees. It doesn't look like it, but it is an interesting point. The start finish line is down here toward turn one. That's why we've had some really dramatic finishes here at Talladega. Different than any other facility here in May in Winston Cup racing. You'll give that car, a channel lock car, a real ride today. And here's Dale Jarrett getting ready to do business. Back there in ninth position. Regular winner in this form of racing. You know, an interesting thing about Joe Nemechek's car, he told, they had some unannounced rule changes before a practice and qualifying started. NASCAR did. He said that car would have gone faster yet if they hadn't made those rule changes. Oh, wow. What about Hermie Sadler back here? Haven't seen him for a while. Onboard cameras with the Walton car. It's number one. He's going to start in 11th place. I think he'll be a contender here today, Ken. His, his, his team has progressively gotten better, and his sponsor is already renewed for next year, so he's all set. There's my brother up there, Uncle Mike. And there's Randy LaJoy in that number 74. Had a terrible time in qualifying, relegated to the second day qualifying. Makes him 26 on the field as he battles for the lead in Grand National points with David Green. Randy's done a great job, Ken, uh, this year, uh, stepping into that car after Johnny Benson won the championship in it last year, and he's picked up right where Johnny left off. I, I'm really impressed with the way went. Randy has driven the car this year. And this is the track that turned it around for him back in 1993 when he finished second in this race to uh, Dale Earnhardt. Now, you see Derek Cope coming out here. He did not qualify this car. His dad had a heart attack, and so he was back up in, in uh, Washington Northwest. Yes, and so uh, Derek is in it now. Tim Bender qualified the car, qualified in 15th position, but Derek will have to go to the rear as a result of the change of driver. So as a result, he came down pit road and took on a little bit of gas that he might have burned in these couple of pace laps. Incidentally, he says his dad's doing well and probably is watching today. Derek Cope back here ready to go, and Tim Bender still looking for a good ride for the future. Yeah, somebody may say, you know, why would they do that? Well, they've, they've had two pace laps here. That's five uh, and a half miles, and so uh, that's that's a gallon of gas. Sure. And and Mike Wallace came in also, kept his, he's already at the rear, so why yeah. not come in? You're at the back of the field, take the fuel on, and that might help you out later on. Comparison of Grand National and Winston Cup cars, gentlemen. Looking at them, there's not a great deal of difference. There's 100 pounds of difference in the weight. The Grand Nationals are 100 pounds lighter. There is a difference in the wheelbase. 105 for the Grand National cars, 110 for Winston Cup cars. Engine same size, but these cars that are running today have a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio, where in regular Winston Cup races, there is no restriction on compression. There is, however, on the restrictor plate tracks like Talladega. Yeah, actually, these cars make more horsepower, Ned. They got the uh, 9 to 1 engine with the 390 carburetor and a bigger restrictor plate than the Winston Cup cars had. There's probably 20 more horsepower in these engines than there is in the Winston Cup. Therefore, Joe Nemechek was quicker than the Winston Cup. Pace cars off. Field's coming down. We're ready for a start. Derek Cope all the way back in 42nd. 
Don Cope sitting there hoping to see his son just thrash this field all the way from the rear. Boy, they're comfortable out back there. Oh, yeah, there is no bad starting spot in this on this racetrack. Except if you're right in the middle right now. Ooh, that's bad. <laughs> Forgot about that. Green flag. Well, this is as calm as it's going to be right here, folks. Uh, from here on out, get get ready. Buckle up your seatbelt, as Ned said. Tie down your television, because they love to knock it off the shelf. You don't watch. It takes them uh, a little more than a lap to get these cars up to full speed because of the restrictions that are put on this type of racetrack. And that's why you don't see anybody break away. That's why they'll run side by side by side by side here for the whole race. I think that would drive you crazy. That track would really dry out there. Well, you know, with the high, uh, the high banking here, uh, even when there's moisture in the racetrack, it doesn't bother the race car because the banking holds the car in position. Coming around to complete lap number one. Well, Nemechek's car has proven that it was definitely the fastest car here because he just jumped out there to a pretty nice size lead for uh, Talladega. Chad Little's jumped into second spot, and Kevin LePage has pulled himself up into third in a hurry. LePage. Loading up the gun on number 88 up to third and Chad Little just pulling away. Remember, he started in third and look at McLaughlin. Number 34, the yellow and red car on the outside. Greg Sachs in the middle as they come thrashing down that back straightaway. Right now, while the tires are still new and getting a good grip, the outside lane is the fastest lane. That might be true later on, but certainly in the early part of the race, the fast lane you keep the cars wound up out there so those where they're up there are moving on mclaughlin from eighth trying for fourth and that red and yellow car doubled up as they go double wide out of four and down the main straight away well i think ken is you can see why starting up front is so important because the front of the field is actually pretty sanitary right now the nemechek and uh and uh, the 23 car, they're all in line and they don't have that three wide racing just now well we had to some three wide right there as your brother michael dipped down on the inside dale jarrett went with him and who was that Jeff Purvis that they were passing just blew right on by? Now they're three wide off that corner right there, and that is treacherous, folks. Why? Well, it takes uh, the car in the middle can buff the wind around, and it can just suck the air right off that spoiler, and when it does, he goes airborne. First lap average speed was 169, second lap 189 miles an hour, so they're getting on with it. Yeah, it takes, like you said, then about a, a lap to get them wound up, but once they get wound up, they hold them wide open. They got a lot of power in them. Sondale Jarrett there with the onboard camera for a moment in ninth. Coming around, they'll complete three laps by this time. Joe Nemechek looking back at Chad Little, the defending champion in this event. I said a moment ago there that the low groove maybe was not the place to be, but Michael Waltrip is proving that wrong now. He's moving right on up towards the front on that low groove. And look at Parsons drop to the inside, goes under Chad Little, goes after Nemechek in the number 10. And you got to remember, Ken, uh, Nemechek's car is a half second quicker than the rest of the field, but watch how quickly these guys go by. Three wide. Chad Little peaks on the outside. Pulls back in. There's Michael right there behind Phil Parsons, and they're going to try to overtake Nemechek for the lead. Michael Waltrip from 10th spot. Right up there fighting for the lead as Phil Parsons goes for first place. Side by side with Nemechek as they come down out of turn four to complete lap number four. It's almost like they haven't started the race yet. Ken, look at them. They're all lined up. Two lines there just coming down through here at 190 miles an hour. Michael Waltrip up the middle. And Dale Jarrett on the inside. Hey, guys, he won't, can't go four deep into that turn. Be careful. <laughs> Especially when it's our son and our brother. Oh, it? I know. That's my brother doing that. <laughs> he said he had a good car today. And, uh, of course, if, if the car's handling well, you can pull off some passes like that. Especially early in the race when the tires are still good and everybody's being cautious. Come out of two, take your best hole and go for it. Here comes Mike Wallace taking a shot on the bottom of the racetrack. Kenny Wallace in car number eight. He is running good. Picked up a good draft going into the turn. Well, we heard him say earlier that he wanted to get this car out of here today because he wanted to sell it. So we'll see if he takes good care of it or not. Of course, got to make sure it'll run good, too. Kenny Wallace from 14th up into third spot. And there's uh, Chad Little, who's having a little bit better run today than he's had in some of the previous Winston Cup race, or uh, Bush races. And guys, let's look up front. Mark Martin, who started pretty far back in the pack, is right there with Michael Waltrip and Dale Jarrett. He's already up there battling for third. He's down on the Is that, that, is that him out? Good. Yeah. Three, I didn't even realize he got up there that quick. From 16, he's under Kenny Wallace. 
Well, he's the benchmark in this series. I mean, if the, you beat if you beat Mark, you know you've done a great job. Boy, look at that draft he picked up, and he's going to blow all the way to the lead. How about that? That's exactly where he wants to be. Told him last night, the one thing I want to do is come out of this weekend and not be hurt. Oh, yeah. Concerned yeah, you know, it, it bothers him. He likes to run these races, but this racetrack does bother him as far as the, the crashes are concerned, because they're big crashes here, and they'll hurt you. So it's Mark Martin bringing a by. Andy Wallace moving down on the inside of Dale Jarrett. Dale Jarrett up into second spot right in the middle of the track. Now he falls back as they're three wide. And Kenny Wallace on the inside pulls it up. Here comes Greg Saxon, the 29 on the bottom. And Ken, there's no other racetrack that we race on where you can do this, where you can run three wide through the corner like that and make it. <laughs> Greg Saxon's giving that 29 car a pretty good ride right now. Jarrett went all the way from the lead. He's back to about 10th right now. So that's how quickly things can change. And there's Nemechek, who's, uh, what, he's running fifth now. So uh, looks like it's a forward show right now. It's three forwards up here running pretty good together. Yeah, and you've got about 30 cars, a second, maybe second and a half apart. Yeah, what do we got here? The last place car, I mean, they're all on the screens. That tells you how close together. Are they all go right here? 42 of them. Mark Martin right where he wants to be. Out of trouble up in front. And I know you're not, I know you can't tell this at home, folks, but when they go by here, it's just a big thunder, just like an airplane taking off. Mark Martin stays just barely in front. Here comes Michael Waltrip back another time, up into second spot. You can see why, Ken, and we talked early in the opening about things happening here, and you can see why. I mean, if anything would happen at the front of the field right now, it'd wipe back the whole field. Further back in this cluster, You've got David Green. Ah, Stewart has just come up into 10. Tony Stewart to 10. David Green back to 11. Todd Bodine now in 12. Tony Stewart's probably the most sought-after young race driver in America right now, and he's out here today driving a pretty good race, and he'll probably be in a sprint car tonight somewhere. See Rodney Combs at 43. He's in 13th spot. Looking back at Chad Little right now in fourth spot as Martin Waltrip and Nemechek are one, two, and three. if it's like normal. Normally when we go to break, they have something happen. <laughs> we'll just watch. Ooh. Thank you. <clears throat> it's hard to explain what's going on for mm -hmm. watching, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm on my tippy toes. <laughs> Look at Michael. He's got a good car. He does. Yeah. And Mark surprised me. I just, of course, both those cars have got Roush motors in them, too. Michael gets his motors from Roush. Oh, does he? Yeah. I think he may have chosen the wrong line down the back straightaway. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at him. Yes, sir. Look at Nemechek. He's caught in the middle right there. Sliding back. They're three wide. They've got him standing and cheering here as Martin stays just barely in front. Mark Martin just barely in front of Phil Parsons with 11 laps, 29 and two tenths miles down, 106 laps to go all green thus far. That's Michael Waltrip a little further back, right down to the bottom. 
as he continues to hold on to a spot, and all of a sudden, Bodine is up there, ready to fight with him. For the moment, Parsons takes the advantage on that inside line. Ken, our post hitter, Nemechek, uh, he's in 12th place right now. He picked the wrong line to get in there just a second ago, and he went straight to the back. Tony Stewart's up to seventh place, too. He's making a great move. From 30th. 30th. Yeah. yeah, Tony Stewart in number 15. White and red car. Tony Stewart having a tremendous run. He was second down there at Orlando in that first IRL race of the season. And for more on him, let's go to Dick Bergren. Tony Stewart would be running a sprint car. In fact, tonight, Tony Stewart will be running a midget in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's a little hard to keep up with this guy. He's the most versatile driver in the field. In 1996, he has run an Indy car, a Grand National car, a TQ, a midget, a sprint car, Silver Crown Legends. I'm getting out of breath, guys. Mini Cup. And he's also going to do a truck, a super modified, and an all pro. Darrell, he's a busy guy. <laughs> he is. <laughs> I bet watch him. I know everywhere he's going to be over the next six months. <laughs> well, there have been some published reports that Darrell Walter might have an eye on that guy for more reasons than one. Well, I, Ned, I told this story. I thought I was being shrewd and sly when I mentioned his name a few yeah. weeks ago. He might give me a quick call and tell me he was interested. A lot of people got that. He's been <laughs> given a lot of calls from a lot of people. Harry Rainier says he has him under contract. Watch yourself. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> and Harry and I are real good friends. <laughs> Back to the line. It is Phil Parsons with the advantage. And Can't. that is the entire field. And consider that we're 13 laps into this thing, 34 and a half miles, and that's the draft. That's the fight for first place right there, 25 strong. More than likely, Ken, they have not cracked the throttle since the green flag came out. They've had them wide open ever since they took off. Averaging over 187 miles an hour for the first 10 laps. That would be a record if they stay at this pace. There's no reason to believe they won't because uh, everybody seems to be, cars seem to be working well and everybody's used real good judgment so far. I haven't seen anybody make any radical moves. But it, the pressure, the mental pressure to go that fast with that many people around you all the time. Well, you. Yeah, it does, but it takes a while to do it. Right now they're having fun. At least they think <laughs> they are. Four wide. <laughs> no, not quite. Three's in them. And then some. Oh, there's Tony stuck in the middle. Yeah, and here's the 26 coming on to Cope. First car on pit road, Derek Cope, who had to go to the back of the field after Tim Bender had qualified that machine. Looked like the hood was coming up too, Ken. That's bad news. Out in front, Phil Parsons, who won here in 1998, driving for Richard Jackson in the 500. That's the Winston Cup race tomorrow. Big day here. You'll see it all on CBS starting at 1 Eastern. First and 25th, one and four tenths of a second. Boy, is this some kind of racing. Now look at Michael Waltrip right there in second place. Phil Parsons leading in the 10, and then comes Mark Martin in third, and that's exactly where Martin wants to be. And remember, this is the fifth time they've run this race. Mark Martin has never finished in the top 30 in this event. Let's give a call to Purvis, too. He's in the uh, fourth position there, and uh, he's running along pretty sporty himself. He got shuffled back a little while ago and got back to about 15th place. Now he's already back up to fourth. He has a good car. I don't understand why somebody isn't talking about Purvis. Uh, he's a great driver and a good young man, and of course he's from Clarkson, Tennessee, and uh, he's one of those Tennessee boys that does real good. That's Here. that number four right there. That is Purvis as he brings it along right up into the front of the field. Michael Waltrip goes for the lead. Mark Martin goes with him. Dale Jarrett goes on the inside of Phil Parsons. Phil's going to wind up about fourth or fifth when this uh, pass is all over. Here comes the bundle at about 190 miles per hour at this portion of the track directly in front of us. 25 cars, one and four tenths of a second apart. And Both those uh, cars, Ken, Michael's and uh, Mark Martin's both are powered by Roush engines. Uh, Mike gets his engine from uh, Roush, and so does Mark Martin. Uh, so uh, those cars are running very well. And I guess that's a Yates engine in the 32 car of Dale Jarrett. So it is. All we well represented here at the front of the field, and that's a Ron Hutter in the four car. Chad Little in the middle getting covered up out there. Where's that Tracy? No, that's Chad. Tracy Leslie with new colors in here. Oh, where'd great. that uh, 43 car come from? He come Rodney creeping Combs up in there, Rodney Cole. They've taken the Derek Cook car behind the wall. We saw him earlier there in the pits. The Babcock car is out. Here's Michael Waltrip sneaking a peek at first place as they come back down to complete lap number 17 this time. And Jarrett, who had a lead for the moment, gives it up. Turns it over. Michael Waltrip is out in front. Now you're riding with Dale Jarrett as he battles for the lead. 
the 98 car up along the outside. That's Jeremy Mayfield. Wow. He started back in 18th position. That's what I said when we started this thing, Ned. There is no bad starting spot at this racetrack. You just got to be uh, real cautious to work your way to the front, but you can start anywhere and lead. Garrett getting caught in the middle. Yep. And the inside and outside draft just blew him away right there. Now he's back to what? Seventh, eighth, ninth spot on here. Nima checked the pole sitter alongside him. Yeah, he's starting to work his way back up toward the front. He got shuffled back there a minute ago, and that's what will happen all day long, Ken. Gal get in the wrong line, and he'll go back and he'll have to work his way back to the front. Take a look at this. Michael Waltrip continuing to lead. Jeremy Mayfield now challenging those leaders. So that's what just happened to Purvis. Mm -hmm. Oh, there goes a car one. crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. one gone. Got a big is that, crash. Is that Phil? Phil Parsons. Oh, no, it's not. There's the three car. I told you them commercials will get you. Oh, big crash, big crash. Who's that? Is that Chad? Mm -hmm. Larry Pearson. Larry Pearson. Oh, I believe Chad was no. in it, though. I think I saw a green car. No, he's coming green. That started, I'm sure, with Phil. It looked like the tire cut down or something. He took a pretty wild ride. I know that. Boy, he's had a bad, a rash of bad luck. He's crashed about four or five races in a row here. It's back. He's back. He's back the other way. He's back on the. You ought to There's see him. There's Bessie. Uh, There's the nine. Wreck turn three. But it started in the middle of the back stretch. These guys coming down the back straight away ought to pass by him here pretty shortly. You're showing it. Go back on the back straightaway. You're up in the third bring, turn. Bring number five on around. Uh oh, there's as far as you can. No, that's 70. I thought that was point leader there for a second. Yeah. Back straightaway. There's got to be another three or four cars. Well, it happened going into three. Didn't there it? they are. I thought it was just before three. He's back okay. behind the telesign where Phil broke. Oh, really? It's clear the telestrator. Yeah, it's clear, Bob. 57 car. Crunched. That's about as far as you can go. In lap 18. Lap 18, major crash, multiple car crash going down toward turn three on the back straightaway. And there you see the number seven out of 70 out of Davenport, Iowa. That's Dale Fishland's car. One of those, Larry Pearson's car, has been destroyed in this crash. And we believe that Phil Parsons' car has been destroyed as well. We're picking them up out there. Joe Bessie's car is also down. You see, there's Larry. part of the. I, I, you know, I'm not. I don't know where Phil's car is. There's the remains. Some of the. Meanwhile, on pit road, the activity. At lap 19, fueling these cars and getting them back out with 50 and 5 tenths of a mile complete. Let's take a look again at what happened. Come down the back here. That's Phil on the inside. Oh, I see. He gets he gets clipped right here by Greg Sachs. Greg like. Sachs. Yeah, into the outside wall he goes, and when he when he starts to hit that outside wall. Cars have nowhere to go. Debris flying everywhere. I, it's amazing that as many cars got through that, that did. Of course, Bill's car is just taking a tremendous pounding here as he goes into the outside wall. Well, here comes the trouble as that car comes down across the track. Fish line spins around. So does Tracy Leslie in the green number 11 car. Mike, is that Mike Wallace up there on the high side? It looks like it was in. Mike Carmen was in that in the 24 car. Okay. Second part of this incident. There's where he's collected. That's Larry Pearson head on into him there. Boy, it's hard to and tell. There's the so Holocaust many cars. Yeah. Him. So many cars. That Mike was that Mike Wallace? Yes, it was. Up on the outside. Yeah. Here we Riding go. Riding with Phil Parsons as this in as he's tabbed by Greg Sachs. He's trying to get 
I guess Sachs was trying to get down in behind him possibly and they just clipped each other. Shot Phil right up into the outside wall. And that's a shame. Phil's had, you know, a couple of three bad weeks here. I know Milwaukee and New Hampshire and now this. Oh, goodness, look at that shot. And they're still wrecking. Phil Parsons, six in points. Oh. Let's go to Dick Bergman. And I'm with Tracy Leslie. He is in the garage area. How did that look to you? Same as Daytona. <laughs> You know, we come down here, we picked up a pretty decent sponsor with Kamatsu, and we're just hoping to have a good long day. You know, track usually has a lot of good luck for me, but didn't didn't much today. I don't know. I guess they got a little racy up front, and I just got into it is all. You know, cars going everywhere. You really can't do nothing going into turn three, but we'll be back next week at Indy IRP there and try to win that thing again. Well, this is his fourth start this year in this division, Ken Squire. He has failed to finish all of them. Yeah, his first start since Charlotte for Tracy Leslie. Now, there you see that Alabama car. That's the number 24 of Mike Harmon. It had a great qualifying run. Yeah, Red Farmer's a crew chief on that car. Of course, everybody down here in Alabama knows who Red Farmer is, so uh, too bad to see that car out of the race. Look again. Here we are with Phil Parsons. Normal speed. He's going by the 29 car as they start down into turn three here, and I... I don't know if the 29 car tried to get in behind him or I'm not sure exactly how that could have taken place. Phil may have tried to get in front of him. I'm not sure, but man, that's an incredible impact. Hmm. And that's exactly how it feels and sounds. And there's the car being towed in now. Channel lock number 10 of Phil Parsons who came in here in six and points. Going back to the garage on the hook. CBS Sports coverage of the Talladega 500K continues after this message and a word from your local station. Joe Bessie, he just came in the garage. Did he go back to the garage? Yeah, they had him on the hook. Okay. Started in sacks. Right there. Well, you know, no, it's back just a tad from there. For we want to see where the original touch was made. Did you see it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. These guys were almost. Right. I mean, that could have been so big. I mean, you're talking mm -hmm. about a car in fourth place. There's the three leaders, and here he is in fourth place. Thank you, sir. I gotta believe 29 was trying to get down in behind him. I think he was. Yeah, I think so. Just, just, just misjudged it. So easy to do. Thank you. CBS Sports coverage of the Talladega 500K is sponsored by Nicotrol. Six weeks, one step, take control with Nicotrol. Prime Star, mini dish satellite entertainment with no dish to buy. And by smooth Bush beer and easy drinking Bush Light. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. There you see the remains of Phil Parsons' car as it is brought back to the garage area. And Ned, why don't you give us your perspective on what happened? Okay, we're coming down the back stretch, and this blue car right here is Phil Parsons passing Greg Sachs, who is in this car right here. And uh, as he almost gets by, we'll move the tape forward. It looks like that maybe Greg was trying to get down behind Phil, and it just clipped him a little bit, shooting Phil into the outside wall. Of course, as he spins around out there, everybody else trying to get their car slowed down and under control. Then they start hitting each other back there, and, well, I'll tell you, it all breaks loose then. It's 
There we see Dale Fishline spinning the car number 70. There's Tracy Leslie in the green car coming in there. Larry Pearson banging into it. Mike Harmon, Mike Wallace got into it. There were several other cars involved as well. Lucky that uh, Larry Pearson didn't go over. He lifted that rear end up three or four feet in the air. Yeah, he did. And of course, Phil Parsons owns that car himself. And uh, like I said, he's had a lot of bad luck last few years. Mike Wallace, who's had nothing but bad luck. Yeah. He and Barry Owen, I mean, that car has won some Bush races. I know they're yeah. disappointed to be out of the race today. Let's go to Dick Bergen. Well, Ken, Larry Pearson's car is here in the garage area, and Ryan Pemberton just looked at it and did the understatement of the day. He said it's really torn up. The good news, they have talked to their driver. Larry Pearson is just fine. Believe it or not, these guys are trying to figure out if they can straighten this bent frame and get this race car back out there again. Well, I'm not down there. I'm just looking at it on the camera, and I'd say they can't. It's going to be a tough chore. Of course, the reason they would want to is to get back out and run as many laps as they can, try to get some points. He's ninth in points. Let's get more on the Phil Parsons part of the story. Well, I'm with Phil, and uh, Phil, they've seen it a lot up in the booth on the replay many, many times. What happened from your point of view? Well, uh, I was watching the video in the in an ambulance on the way to the hospital, and uh, I was passing uh, the 29 car, and I wanted to stay pretty much clear of him because he looked a little bit wild yesterday in practice and I don't I don't know if he was trying to get in behind me or what and uh, he clipped me in, a, in the right rear corner and just turned me straight in the wall and, and that collected all the rest of the rest of the guys. I just can't believe it. A channel like Chevy was so good. I mean Michael came up there and said hey I'll let him go let him lead a while you know just we're just riding out there. The car was so good we could lead pretty pretty easily and just trying to get to the finish and uh, we had some some guy that uh, I guess I don't know I don't know what he was thinking. Well, we're all saying this morning, the one thing you don't want to do with these 300-mile uh, races, try and win it early on, just stay right in there and start racing towards the end. And, I mean, I guess that didn't happen. No, it didn't. I mean, we, you know, we had a good enough car. We could lead, and, and it, it didn't bother me if we fell back to 10th because we knew we could work our way to the front. I was trying to be patient. I wanted to lead a little bit for our sponsors channel out, get them on some CBS TV, and uh, we had some guys. I, I don't know what they were thinking, quite honestly, but I guess that's, that's the brakes, and I probably made mistakes before, too. Well, there you have it from Phil Parsons. Uh, somebody had an attack of the Braves. Back to you, Ken. Greg Sachs now leads the event with LaJoy second, Martin third, Nemechek fourth. You may know what's wrong with Bobby Labonte. He's been in and out of the pits a number of times. Good point. And Sachs caused that wreck and he's leading the race. Yeah. I mean, is that that's racing, you know? That's racing at its worst. <laughs> at its ugliest. Somebody should, Somebody should ask him what he's saying on the radio about the accident. We should get Ingle talking about what Sachs is saying about that incident. He was the other one. Yes, sir. Yeah. stuff he'll be back up in there so be sure to have that net that's fine what you got now Dale Jarrett avoided a tremendous wreck on lap 199 to earn the victory. 
Sunday, November 3rd, we'll return to Florida for the Miami 300 at Homestead. Back with you live at Talladega. Looking forward to that grand national finale down there at Homestead come November. Let's go to Mike Joy. Ken, the cars that were not involved in the incident took the occasion of the caution fight to come in for at least fuel. Some took on two tires, Rodney Combs and Jeremy Mayfield. Mark Martin got right side tires as well. Dale Jarrett took on right sides and added two rounds of wedge. The only car I saw that took four tires was Michael Waltrip, who also adjusted air pressure and the track bar. Dick Bergeron? Well, Mike Carvin's car is here, Mike, in the garage area. As you can see, it is badly torn up. One of those cars involved in the big crash today was his first ever restrictor plate race. He will remember this one real well. Ken Squire? A lot of them are going to remember this, and not for any of the right reasons. Phil Parsons getting four laps out in front after he qualified on the outside of the front row. Looked like he'd lost more than a flip on the front of that race. Oh, yeah, it, it, he got hit. Not only did he hit the outside wall, but he got hit by about four or five cars, four or five other times. So uh, he probably wadded that one up pretty good. Now here's Sachs in the 29 leading. And right behind him comes Randy LaJoy, followed by Martin, Nemechek, Spencer. And you have Todd Bodine in six. And Stewart is in seventh with Mayfield eighth, Jarrett in ninth. And Fuller is being shown in tenth position. Yeah, Michael's. Uh, Michael Walters back in 16th place after being one of the lead cars, but he took on four tires and made some adjustments, so that's why he's a four back. Let me just add a couple of others here. I uh, gave you the top ten. Little is in 11th, Mike McLaughlin 12th, then you've got David Green 13th, Kevin LePage started well up in third spot today 14th, Dick Trickle 15th, Michael Waltrip 16th, Terry Labonte to 17th, Strickland in 18th, Collins and Allen round out the top corner. Okay, we're back to green flag racing. And uh, Randy LaJoy is in the second spot there, or at least he was for a moment. And you know, he told us on the opening he had a pretty good car and he thought he could get to the front. So uh, looks like that's paying off too. From 26 position, Randy LaJoy, who was up and over last year. And here comes Mark Martin as he gets that draft on the outside. And with him comes Jimmy Spencer, last year's second place finisher in this race. And here comes everybody. Boy. Ah, they left LaJoy out to dry. Well, it's just one of those things you get in the wrong line and everybody gangs up on you and you feel like you don't have a friend on the racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now he does and Mike McLaughlin getting by him. Here's Nemechek no, pulling up. Actually, what his problem is, he didn't get in any line. That's his problem. He's in the middle and these guys go around him on both sides. He didn't dare make a move either way for fearing the this four wide of uh, tripping another major calamity here. That looked like a calamity ready to happen as they came down beneath us. Now you would think those guys just experienced that crash down the back straightaway. They saw what maybe caused it or was involved in it one way or another and they would be more careful than this. Yeah, right. And the guy that made the speech <laughs> at the driver's meeting is, oh, we got a bad crash in the back straightaway. Rodney Combs. Combs has crashed. They're trying they to avoid him and here comes the trouble. So you can't avoid, once you see a car spin in front of you, you get on the brakes and it just, everybody breaks. This is actually a bigger crash than the one we just had. And Kenny Wallace is involved. Mike McLaughlin right here with the front end dragon. Hermie Sadler in the car number one. There's Patty McWeese in the car number 14. She gets Looks her like car going. Yeah. Back to the strike they come. And I'm sure they're all giving hand signals to ease out of it. Martin comes across first. Sachs in second. Chad Little followed by Jimmy Spencer and Dale Jarrett, the front five. Here's Hermie Sadler. Ken, uh, 10 laps ago, we had 40 cars running. Now we got about 25 running. Talk to the Army. You hear them talking to Hermie Sadler. Yeah, they're trying to find out what kind of damage he sustained and what they need to do for him. How about you, Hermie? Wonder if it uh, pulled his radio loose or something. Mark, is he moving? He's moving real slow. Yeah, sometimes, Ned, uh, you know, right, you, the driver bounces around so much inside the race car that it can actually jerk that radio cord loose, and he may be trying to talk to him and just doesn't know this radio isn't hooked up. Seems impossible the way that five-point bells is on and everything, as you can talk about, being jostled around yet. We've seen pictures of Richard Petty at Talladega in that seat and being stretched all the way to the other side of the car. Oh, yeah, you, you know, the body, you hit something at 200 mile an hour, it stops and you keep going, and uh, it puts a strain on everything. Rodney Combs, number 43, where it began. Where 
it ended. Five other cars eliminated in this wreck that happened on lap 26. See, it didn't look that bad, Ken, when you look back and you saw the 43 car spinning. That was the only car involved, but then everybody has to react to it, and that's when you got trouble. A little smoke rolling out of Sadler's car as he comes down on the pit road. And that's probably tire smoke. He, he probably has knocked a uh, fender or some sheet metal in against a tire. Yeah, he's just dragging along there about 10, 15 mile an hour trying to make it back to the pit, but uh, that smoke. Now, he's to see his radio cord hanging down here on his uh, right shoulder. That's his radio that should be plugged up. That's why he can't talk to him. Uh, quarter panels hanging off on the right rear. Uh, we got big problems. The rear end's been. They say Rodney Combs may still be in car number 43. That car was hit after the uh, initial crash. Yeah, he may have taken another a, car, and he may have taken another hit. Yeah, car. he may have taken a shot in the driver's door. And, and Ken, as good as these cars are, as well as they're built, that's one of the vulnerable areas of the car is right there in that driver's door. Rodney Combs, who started in 17th today for this event. Let's take a look at some replays of this incident. Well, of course, they were all bunched up coming off of turn two. Gosh, Ned, and it looked like Rodney was at the back of the pack. He was by himself and looked like the car just made a hard right, like something happened to it. And there were two separations of cars. There was a little bit of distance in between a pack back there, and that pack was coming up on him as yeah. he was spinning around, and that's what oh. really caused the big trouble. There's yeah. that second oh, and he, hit. Yeah, he got hit right in the driver's door, and boy, I tell you, that is disastrous. But, uh, Ned, I'm, I'm just curious as to what happened to that car because it was back there all by itself, and it made a violent turn to the right as if something happened to it, mechanically. I agree. Yeah, I agree. It looks like that either a tire or something else. So. Rodney Combs now in the ambulance. That was Hermie Sadler's car that was in contact with Rodney after he'd spun a couple of times in the back straightaway. For more on Rodney Combs, here's Mike Joy. Well, they're trying to figure out here in his pit. His wife, Sue, is here, and Terry Allen, the crew chief. Terry, did he say what happened? No, he never did come back on the, on the uh, radio to say anything at all. I uh, heard him key the mic as things were going around in circles, but that's all he ever said. We haven't talked to him at all yet. Okay, and he walked to the ambulance, so apparently he is okay, and the car just appeared to turn right. His wife, Sue, is sitting here, and just kind of a lot of people running for TV screens and grabbing for radios, and uh, you're pretty calm about this whole thing. Well, there's nothing I can really do at this point. I just got to stay calm and see what happens and see what they tell me. Take another look at what happened to uh, Rodney Combs. Bernie Sadler, you're riding with the number one car. Oh. Well, you could see that he couldn't see. No, he couldn't. And, and you know that pop, that noise you hear when he hit that car, it feels just like somebody shot you with a stun gun when that happens. That's how that's what a, how hard an impact it is to the driver. It literally sends shockwaves all over your body. We'll take a commercial break and we'll return to Talladega, the running of this grand national race after these messages. The pre-race parade begins at 10.30. The green flag flies at 12.15 tomorrow.
looked like the front and the rear, but front not in rear. not in the driver's yeah, door yeah. as we thought. Yeah. This thing will confuse you. See, this this is uh, camera five, but it's an ISO. Yeah. I know a moment ago we were looking at Phil Parsons part of his wreck, but it wasn't on the other yeah. uh, deal. And so the fans at home were not seeing that. So yeah. that can be confusing. I get confused and look at it. I wish they'd pave all that down the back right there. Get rid of that grass, and that's a dirt bank with with arm coat, and that is it's yes, the worst sir. thing it could be. Yeah, you're right. Have it. Thank yes, you, go sir. ahead. <clears throat> okay. Coming up next, live second round coverage of the Ameritech Senior Open from Long Grove, Illinois. That's here today on CBS. Let's go to uh, Dick Bergen with Kenny Wallace. Well, the value of this used car, Ken, is practically nil, as W.C. Fields once said. You were one of the drivers in the driver's meeting this morning, Kenny Wallace, who spoke out and told the drivers, take it easy. What's happening out there? Well, you know, I don't like saying anything in the driver's meeting because... I'm low-keyed sometimes, but uh, Dale Jarrett started it, and, you know, it's just a deal. What happens is I figured, you know, this race I'd take a different manner. I'd lead the race. I'd get up there. So the Red Dog car, we run in the top. We got, you know, run second, third, top five, and then I guess Greg Sachs, you know, didn't give uh, Phil Parsons, I mean, didn't give him an inch. So here I'm running eighth and get taken out running eighth. So we come in, we fix it, and I said, well, I'm in good shape now. I'm in the back. And they just... Uh, they just run all over Stevie Reeves coming off a of two, whether something happened to his car or not, I don't know. But um, the thing is, is you, you got to roll off the gas here. If you get a run and you got to roll off the gas, it means you're just staying in line. Every minute minute, any time anybody gets a run, they go for it. And that's why you run two, three wide. But, uh, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm just uh, I'm just telling you what what's going on out there. But, uh, hey, the last Grand National race here for me. Man, oh man, half field taken out. We ain't even 20 laps into this deal. Bad deal. Ken Squire. Kenny Wallace. Stevie Reeves' car badly thrashed in that crash as well, and we'll give you more on that story shortly. Yeah, we need to look back there and see what's got to see what caused that 43 car to do what it did. That's what we got to see. Maybe something did happen to these cars. Maybe it's the uh, yeah. CBS Standard Sports Race oh, Summary. Oh, it's sponsored by Mobile Motor Oil. Changing oil. That's in the front here, so we're not going to see anything here. No, we're not going to see anything here. No, he was in front of that. He was right behind the lead pack. That's why you hate, you know, you hate to come to this place. I mean, it used to be a lot of fun to race here when we could spring out a little bit, get two or three guys and work with each other against it, but you can't do it anymore. You're at the mercy of so many people here now. Go back to Mark Martin. This CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Mobile Motor Oil, changing oil for over 125 years. 
Let's take a look at the uh, race summary. After 32 laps, we've had six leaders, five, seven lead changes, and the average speed, 118 miles an hour because of two cautions for major calamities here that have eaten up 10 laps. Nobody officially out of the race, but that isn't uh, no. totally accurate because we know that uh, Phil Parsons has gone, Leslie is gone, uh, the Mike Harmon car has been wiped out. Mike Wallace's car now at uh, Rodney Combs crash. And uh, Stevie Reeves' car has been destroyed as well. So we'll get that updated. For, for more, let's go to David Wallace. Well, I'm down with Rodney Combs. He's just come out of the medical center. You look okay, Rodney. What happened? Everybody said in the booth that your car just turned sharp, right? Yeah, it uh, looked like it cut the left rear. Actually, the whole tire come off the wheel. It cut it, went down quick, and I, I felt it, but I went to save it, and when it went back to the right, it just turned so hard to the right and back into the wall, and I knew that wasn't a good spot to be, but I had no control to get it back down off the wall, and got hit pretty hard and hit pretty hard, but, you know, we're just trying so hard for Lance. We come 17th to 3rd and knew we had a good horse. We was going to lead this thing and possible chance to win it, you know, and just got caught by ill-fated bad luck again, you know, with that left rear, but... You know, just thanks to Lance, a great sponsor, and my crew, and, you know, tell Mom and Dad I'm okay and all the people there. But, you know, just bad luck, man. We're fast. We just can't get the finishes we deserve. Well, I see a very disappointed man, but also pretty lucky, too, having been hit so hard so many times, Ken. One of a record 26 different leaders in the 86 Talladega 500, Rodney Combs. You see him back there, Ken. He wobbled just a little bit, and that was the tire going down. And when it did, it turned him dead right into the wall. And right in front of that other pack of traffic, they had separated just 100 yards or so between two packs of traffic, and uh, the second pack was coming right in on him, and there we see what happens. Boy, Hermie Center. I, I don't think we've mentioned Jim Bowden's car. He was one of those yellow cars, number 51, that was involved there as well. And yeah. Reeves was the car that bounced off the back wall twice and then slid along it, and that was the end of the uh, Clabberville. But, well, I've seen him. Yeah, he's out there. Yeah. He's out there. Yeah, I don't know what he, he's, he's not in good shape, but he's out there, but the... Hermie Sadler's the one who really took a shot. I mean, he hit the 43 car hard. There's a the Jim Bowen car, car number 51. Looks like they're active and trying to get him back into this event. Jim Bowen out of Portland, Oregon, the brother of Chuck Bowen. Getting ready to go green here shortly. 33 laps are complete. Pace cars in. Mark Martin's going to lead them down with Greg Saxon second, followed by Chad Little, Jimmy Spencer. Back there in fifth is Dale Jarrett, then Nima Check. Mayfield in eight, Todd Bodine, Michael Walker ninth, Tony Stewart tenth, McLaughlin, Bajoy, LePage thirteenth, David Green fourteenth, Terry Lavati fifteenth as they sort them out. Twenty-seven cars still being shown on the lead lap, and one of those, the one at the very back, is Bobby Lavati, who made numerous pit stops during that caution period. Well, we'll see a whole different race now, Ned. A lot of cars have uh, been knocked out of contention now, and. Uh, You'll see the guys group up into some small groups, I think, and uh, we'll, we'll see a breakaway pack here pretty quick. Here's 44 trying to get back into this thing. Yeah, look at him skedaddling toward the lead. That's Bobby Labotti in the car number 44, passing Patty Moise. Now, see, she was involved in that spin, but apparently didn't hit anything because she's out there running. That's Dick Crickle right behind uh, Bobby Labotti in the red number 64. Jeff Purvis there in the car number four. Jeff's about down. He, must have, he was involved in that other... Uh, yeah, he must have spun or something. Well, no, he's not. Oh, he's he's not. shown he's the not. left there there He's not. I beg your pardon. 20 and spot. Yeah, I beg your pardon. I didn't see him getting in trouble, but... Well, the, the scoring showed him a lap down a little bit earlier, but that uh, has been corrected. They actually picked him up to 19th, and Bobby Labonte just getting around him, so he's picked up quickly from 27th spot as he begins to sort out the number 44 and charge toward the front where Mark Martin is on the point, right with him, Greg Sachs, and the front of the field stabilizing over the last two laps. Well, that three-car group had pulled away, but now Joe Nemechek and Dale Jarrett hooked up together and have caught up to them. To Dick Burton. Ken, one of the most seriously damaged cars is that of Larry Pearson. Incredibly, the crew is working on it. They're going to try to get it back out again to run just one lap. He came in here ninth in points. If he can run one lap, there's so many cars out, he'll pick up a whole bunch of points. That's what they're going to do. Yeah, he gained three positions by running one lap. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not in favor of, uh, on these kinds of racetracks, putting a torn-up race car out there on the racetrack. I understand maybe for a lap or two. I, I can go for that, but once he's done that, he ought to bring the car. He got a car with a blown tire going into turn three, or turn one down here. Caution is out. Yellow is on. Caution is out once again for the third time today. We have a yellow condition. And it's for car number...
number 96. That would be Stevie Reeves, who was one of those cars yeah. collected. You were talking about when he was running. Was part of that tire right down here by the start finish line and some other pieces yeah. as well. That's a that's the parts of the car that were knocked loose over there on that wreck, and I think they're just starting to fly off of it. And he, I think he cut a tire down going into the, into the turn. Reeves. See, it's the right front tire. Yeah. 29th position. So we're back under caution another time. Once you lose the rhythm of one of these things, it's so hard to get it back, to pick back up. And when you've got cars that have been damaged, still trying to fight for points out there, that adds to the uh, difficulty in keeping this thing rolling. CBS Sports coverage of the Talladega 500K will continue after this message and a word from your local station. guys you'll get to look at the same thing all over again tomorrow yeah. so get your stories ready don't you be a no story breaks. no breaks nice. no breaks hmm. okay thank you look at 96 no, no breaks, breaks and he's trying to get the thing wowed up and there's a wall he's going to go for use it. it oh he's gone right through he's right down here in front of us yeah he, he can't couldn't get stopped can't wow up he's all the way down here across the start finish line oh that's a hard one now he's trying to decide, hmm, where can I go? I'll just go right in here. Hey, where does this road lead to? Yeah, <laughs> this looks like a good place. <laughs> Off to grandmother's house. He doesn't know how far he has to or walk. Grandpa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's smart. He just picked up one more lap. Yeah, he did. I guess he was thinking about that, Bob, yeah. with no brakes. But <laughs> yeah, anyway. He's not really in the points, Chase. He, he knows. The garage is stupid if they can close by it. <laughs> I finished fourth here one time with a blown motor because I made it out of the pits up here and stopped. But he's 40th and he's 40th in points. It's he's 40th in points. So. But there was a wrecker right there, seeing he was he was instant service. Yeah. Who? Why did they bring the cars down pit road? Yes. Ned, look at Michael's car and see if you see any damage on it. Yeah, see the right side down or or uh, yeah. down underneath the yeah. rocker panel there. Yeah, look like he ran over something. Tomorrow, it's back here to Talladega for one of the wildest rides of the year, the Die Hard 500. We know we're going to wreck. We just don't know when and where. It's Talladega, you just hold it flat out and go all day long. One guy who's learned to go all day long, Sterling Marlin. He'll be racing for his third straight win at the Super Speedway. That's tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern. The Die Hard 500, right here on CBS Sports. Well, there's what's left of uh, Stevie Reeves' car. He brought it down again, and he, he couldn't get it. Whoa, the brakes were gone. Yeah, when he blew that tire, it busted the brake lines and all off the right front. He couldn't get it stopped. So he coasted down across through the pits and all the way down here to that uh, first turn area. He found a record. Yeah, he's going to bring him in. Pulled it right in behind the record there and said, take me home, will you please? Get me out of here. Let's go to David Hawks. Well, I'm down here with Bobby Allison, of course, one of the all-time Winston Cup greats and a four-time winner here. And you've got a slightly different perspective on Darrell Walter from it saying he doesn't like these big packs going around together because it means trouble. What do you think about that? Well, the big cat packs are because everybody's working so hard. The restrictor plate has got the speeds at 190, 185, 195, you know, along in there. But let me tell you, the real reason the packs are tight is because everybody in here is working hard. And uh, my opinion is that, that we definitely need 
the, some sort of uh, restriction on the car to keep the speed somewhere in some sensible range. Without the restrictors, um, they'd be having to go to Montgomery to pick up the wreckage from some of these deals. And uh, I felt like, David, if I'm wrong about that, maybe we need to go back to 426 Hemis and dual four barrels. <laughs> well, they are, Darrell. Like 426 Hemis and four barrels. <laughs> See, Bobby's only guy remembers 426 Hemis and four barrels. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, they were restricted in, uh, these cars were restricted in 1972 when I was driving them. Uh, restrictor plates are a nightmare, but it's just one of the, it's the lesser of all the evils. Now, I guess. how big is the restrictor plate on this car? Uh, 29, 30 seconds. Uh, you can just, I mean, you can barely stick your thumb through the four holes that are underneath the carburetor. They go from 725 to 40 horsepower down to 425 to 30 horsepower. And uh, it's amazing they'll run as fast as they do. 190 plus. Here's Dick Bergman. Ken, Bobby Labonte has made repeated pit stops here during every opportunity he's had. Problem, the radio is out. He can hear them for just a little ways on the racetrack. They can't hear him at all. They still don't have it fixed. Meanwhile, Jeff Green in the three has been in. They worked on the front end of that car. Tony Uri said it wasn't running before. We got the front end damaged, so maybe we're gonna go fast now. We'll see. 39 laps have been completed, 40 when they come by. That'll bring us to 106.4 miles of the 311 to be run in this 500K race. Dale Jarrett seems to be in trouble. Yes, Dale Jarrett, the number 32, going very slowly down on the apron. What's the story here? Well, it shouldn't be out of gas. No. He stopped at uh, 20 laps. He's only run uh, less than 20 laps since then. It's got to be ignition. See him up there messing with the switches. He's, he's hitting the starter button, trying to get it to fire back up, but uh, it's got to be ignition. Band-Aid car. Dale Jarrett needs a Band-Aid right now. Yeah, it does. Ken, you know, we're talking about restrictor plates. You know when the first restrictor plate was used? 1970. Really? And not at Daytona no. or Talladega, Michigan? but at Michigan. Yeah, I remember Michigan. Yeah. Now, I didn't know what it was. Pumping this, see his right leg going up and down. He's pumping the throttle, trying to get something to happen, but uh, looks like he did in order to me. Still running just, just a tad. I don't know if he'll be able to coast all the way back to the pit. Oh, very slow. Apparently. Oh, he's got uh, somebody, he must have a truck coming up behind him, a safety truck. Mm -hmm. I've seen motion him to give him a shove. This is going to cost him a lap and take him out of contention, that's for sure. Bad break for Dale Jarrett, who's been running up here with the leaders. As it acts like uh, he's saying on the, apparently on the radio, and they're monitoring him that it was like the other day when he had water in the fuel. Well, we've had a lot of rain here, and the thing set out here on on the pit lane, so uh, you know it's easy to get fuel water into fuel. Mike, it's crew chief Wes Ward says Dale says the motor will turn over, but it will not fire, not at all. They're perplexed. Looking back at one yeah. of those. Uh, number five is coming. Like look out monster. for number five, That's Ken. Right. <laughs> you know they're going to load up two of those records and take them to Japan for that last race in November. <laughs> oh, well, just a little <laughs> tap there. You haven't gotten your car torn up today, Dale. We just help you out a little bit. <laughs> You're going to miss all the fun here, Dale, so we'll just let you work on the back of this thing. So. Great race car becomes a push me pull me here for number 32. Jarrett coming in. Unknown mechanical gremlins on that one. By the way, with 40 laps complete, Martin Sachs, Little, stay one, two, three, Nemechek fourth, fifth, Mayfield, sixth, Waltrip, then Stewart up to seventh, McLaughlin up to eighth, and LaJoy climbs to ninth, followed by Kevin LePage. Then comes uh, in 11th, Terry Labonte, Spencer, Strickland, Fuller as the green flag is about to be extended. Single foul as we come to the start finish line. That probably is last call. Yeah, that's true, Niv. Nobody's been laughed really on the racetrack, so uh, these guys are, you know, single foul restarts. You cannot pass when there's single foul restarts like that. You can't pass till you cross the start finish line. Once you cross the start finish line, they can go four wide again, and I'm sure they will. 25 cars left in the lead lap, and that's about all the cars left on the track. Boy, it is. Shorten this field up in a hurry. Chad Little wants to go for the lead. 
Boy, that's a that's a great run for Chad. The kind of year he's had, and he's leading this race. I know that's got to be exciting for him. Six-time winner last year, switched to Pontiac this year, had his troubles. Now here comes Nemechek, who sat on the pole into second. Jeremy Mayfield right there. On the inside, that white and red car, that's Mayfield challenging those two leaders. You know, Pontiacs haven't had a great year in uh, Bush or Winston Cup, and uh, I know Chad would like to change that form right here today. Michael Walter coming by in fourth, and it looks like there's a rumple on the side of that number 12. Yeah, I don't know. It looked like something may have happened in the pits or possibly he ran over something. There's a big cave-in place on the right side door down near the rock. I don't think it'll hurt performance, but it doesn't look good. Looking from Randy LaJoy's car back there in 11th spot. There's Greg Saxon in the 29 car. He was in second place when this race restarted a couple laps ago. Martin up on the outside. Wide. Here's LaJoy. And the longer you see him in that blue and white car tucked away on the bottom of the racetrack, just behind the big cash car. And I know people at home are probably saying, why do they keep getting themselves in this position? But you can't help it, folks. I mean, you got to race, you got to hold it wide open, and you got to go where nobody else is, and you can only do that so long. Tommy Stewart caught himself in the middle there, the red and white number 15. Now he gets the joy back off. Let's go. And you see Mark drop down just a bit to pick Tony up and get a little drafting partner there. Tony Stewart on his way toward the front. Chad wants to go back to the front. Of course, you guys know I'm a Tony Stewart fan, but you know it's pretty impressive when a kid can run Indy the way he did, run a truck race, run a, stock, a bush race at Milwaukee, and here he is today on the high banks of Talladega right up in the thick of things. That's that's why people are really high on that young man. Yeah, he's impressive. You're right. The number 15, Tony Stewart. He did what no one had ever done in the United States Auto Club last year. Won the midget championship, won the sprint car championship, won the silver crown championship, all in the same year. Here he is under Jimmy Spencer in number 20, 15 Stewart, beginning to roll. Now that car is running very well and working very well for him, too. Up to six spot, Stewart. Mike Joy. The engine has not refired. The mechanics have given it up, and Dale Jarrett's about to climb out. Did you have any clue what happened, Dale? No, none at all. Uh, it just started to miss uh, whenever I started cleaning my tires off in one and two, and the time I got off turn two, it quit running and it wouldn't, won't fire now. So we've got a problem somewhere and lost so many laps now. Uh, hopefully they'll find out what it is. But unfortunately, we had a good race car. I think we could have won the race. I know Dale's uh, disappointed he's out of the race, but by the same token, the way the race is going, he's probably thinking, yeah, but this thing's all in one piece. Anyway, I can take it home. <laughs> Mike McLaughlin had a shot at the lead, but now he falls back into third. Magic Shoes giving that car a great ride. Stays right up here in the front. Chad Little takes over in first again. Michael Walsh was there in second. The inside, outside line seems to be the quick way for the moment. Back well, on the inside here. Yeah, Michael Walter didn't believe that. He just drove down on the inside with Mark Martin in tow, and around he went. Tony Stewart coming right with him. I think that uh, this race is it's unfolding. I know there's a long way to go yet, but that 12 car and that 60 car seem to me like the classic. They are good right now. Of course, they have a lot of experience, too. Yeah, that's the other part of it. I mean, they know what to do and where to be, and that's going to pay off big at the end. Well, Mayfield's making another good run. Really came on strong after Atlanta this year when uh, he got that fifth place in Winston Cup racing. Giving that car a good ride today. Now, there's Nemechek. Set on the pole, right back into it another time. He's up to fifth at this time. He's swapping those spots. You know, you mentioned Jeremy. Of course, he's on the pole for the race tomorrow, and uh, that's a young man with a great future ahead of him, too. Up in your part of the country? Yeah, he's an Owensboro boy. Him and David Green and Jeff. Hello, coming in. Michael and myself, we're all from the same little old We're behind him in the pole car. See if you can get down there. Well, I'm coming. Just watch your mirror. Let's see the Nima check spotter. Well, this is one place where you've got to have a good spotter, and he's got to help you. Trying to get him to tuck in behind Dick Trickle in the 64. Meanwhile, up in front, Michael Waltrip for the moment. With Mark Martin second, Sachs third, Mayfield fourth. McLaughlin tripping back through the field in a 12th position after having a brief look at first. 
you know, we talk about spotters, uh, Ken, and one thing you got to know is he can only help you so much. And I think that's one thing that gets some of these guys in trouble. They rely on that spotter too much, and he can only see so much. And you got to you got to use your own judgment too. Our in-car communications today provided by Racing Electronics. Closer to the heart of the race. There you see Todd Bodine's number 81 stacked up on the outside. He's the former winner this year. Back toward the front comes Kevin LePay, oh, 88. Now got one coming outside. LePage in 13th in that 88. Michael stays first, Martin stays second, Sack stays. Like that Chad Little Chad, uh, Chad Little. Fourth. Fourth. That puts the 29 car of Sacks back to fifth. You can see how close Mark Martin is running to Michael Walter. That's the most effective way to wrap, make the cars go fast. Pick it up there as close as you possibly can. Yeah, you know, they're real. They're real happy. You know, Mark is. Michael's leading, and uh, they don't have anybody contending for a position right there. And that's uh, that's what Mark would like to see happen. Just sit there and ride for a while, let some laps get, get under their belt before they do any more racing. Mayfield caught up in the center of the track, was able to find a hole, duck back in on the outside. Started to look like he was going to the inside of the check. I should, uh, let me rephrase that. They're, they're racing, all right? They're, before they do any more wrecking, that's what I should have said. <laughs> Good mark, Mark. A smart race he's been driving today. Serving a little fuel, drafting off the back of Michael Walker. He once said strategy. I, I don't know what strategy is. I just race. The strategy is to win. Walkers can't count on a lot of what happens. You just decide as you go on what you think will give you the best chance to win out here. Now those four, front four cars are doing exactly what they need to do. They're about to break away from the rest of the field as long as they stay in line, but it doesn't look like they're going to stay in line. Mark will stay down the inside. Well, I thought Mark Martin was going to try it up on the outside, but they still are in line. It almost looked like his car took off just a little bit with him there, Ned, and he kind of lost that position. Was he breathing it? He could have been. Maybe he's been tucked in there a little tight and needs a little air to the radiator. You got to understand, you know, the guy in third place, Chad Little and the guy in fourth place, Chad needs to win badly. And uh, Tony Stewart doesn't have any drafting experience. Now, how do you explain Chad sitting there behind him two forwards and Tony sitting there saying, gosh, I wonder if I'm doing okay or what if I'm doing this right or not? Stewart was really impressive in that 8 o'clock practice and training period uh, yesterday. He found anybody he could to draft with, got himself quite a lesson in a very short period of time. Mike Joy. Ken, there's another component to this single file running, fuel mileage. Some of the teams have calculated that they may be able to go this race on one more pit stop if there are no more cautions. Look for pit stops at lap 72 and look for some teams to try to stretch it. Running single file, you get a little better gas mileage too. Dick Bergren? Well, I'm watching Mark Martin down here, and he is absolutely flying, but he has been flying all year. This is only his eighth start of 1996. Incredibly, coming into this race, he had led more laps than anybody else in the division, even though he had run less than half of the races. Four wins. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. But he has never finished here. Every time he started at Talladega and Grand National, it's been a DNF. Ken? Never in the top 30. And now they say he has a radio problem. We're being told that he can't communicate back to the pit area. 52 laps are complete. 138 three tenths miles down here in this 311 mile race. 500 kilometers at Talladega today with Waltrip, Martin, and Little duking it out up in front. About to break away again. Yeah, I thought they were. I thought they were going to. And yeah. Look at look at Michael. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. He's leading the race now. He's going to be where? That would be Nowhere. Eight. Eight. Yeah.
Not really. That's a nice shot. That's a great shot. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Bobby uh, Unser lives. If you say that one more time, Ken, I'm going <laughs> to. I can't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there. So Bob's the one to put that game together. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? And Tony second. Chapman. Tony's got to just be beside himself. <laughs> Hermie Sadler, car number one at DeWalt Tool Chevrolet, sitting there looking like a kid at the graduation dance. Nobody will dance with him. Number one stays in there, and they continue to work on it many, many laps down. Meanwhile, in front, Chad Little has the advantage. And in the second spot, Tony Stewart. Stewart moving toward the front all the time. Now in the second spot with Mark Martin in third, Michael Walter back there in fourth. That's a couple of Pontiacs, Ken, and uh, that's just that's that's big for Pontiac to be leading the race, I tell you, because they've had a tough year. They just hooked up together a few laps ago and drafted right on past Mark Martin, and he hooked on to him while from fourth on back. They've been racing side by side, so those front three trying to get away, but now Jeff Purvis has broken loose from that pack, so he should be able to chase them down. Hey, you see Michael there in the MW car, and... Uh, Dick Trickle, they're side by side, and that's allowing that front pack to really get get away. And that's one thing that you can't do here for any long period of time is run side by side when there are other cars up in front of you that have singled out fifth and sixth positions as they were running side by side. Meanwhile, the leaders, and it's Pontiac first and second, as Tony Stewart has brought that car along from the middle of the field. Tony Stewart now challenging. Chad Little, defending champion here in this event. I'm not sure who is uh, wrenching that 15 car. Uh, are you Ned? Who the crew chief on that car is? Well, I know what else was in, was in, involved in it. What else was? Terry Snipes is the listed crew chief on the car. Of course, you know the Wilson Heritage. It, it lives at Talladega because uh, this is one of the places where Kale and Waddell and uh, Harry Rainier's car back several years ago was very dominant. And of course, this is Harry Rainier's car that Tony to drive today. Randy LaJoy. Down afternoon for him, currently in 11th position. Looking back, inside there you see the 26 car, 28 or 28 car. The 28 car at Strickland right there with him. 29 car on this just went by. Mike, Mike Dillon trying to get back out here again. Many, many laps down. Dillon being shown 30 laps away back in 34th spot. So he's going to try to get that car back out here and pick up a few more point positions. He's currently running second in the rookie standings for the Bush Series in 1996. Well, that front three is really broken away because of some of that side-to-side -side racing that went on behind them. But I don't believe they'll get very far. I believe that group with Dick Trickle will hook up and chase them right back down nine leaders thus far in this event and all of a sudden that three car advantage being overwhelmed by that draft just behind them. Yeah you got Trickle and you got the post setter Nemechek back there and those are the fast cars plus Purvis so it won't take them long to chase them back down once they line up. They've got them. Dick Burger. Well, Ken, you've seen Mark Martin shuffling around up front. The reason for that, the engine is running just a little bit hot. They've even sent a runner down to Michael Waltrip's car to let him know that the reason that they were shuffling around was exactly that. They should hit here on lap 72, should only need that one stop, and they should be able to go all the way to the end. 
Yeah, see, when Michael was leading and we saw uh, the 60 car jump out of line over there off the of turn two, I'm sure Michael probably jumped right on the radio and said, what is Mark trying to do anyway? Let's stay hooked up here and stay in line and get away from these guys. He didn't realize Mark's car was going to come. Mark's making a move going around Tony Stewart. Dick Prickle coming right with him. Tony caught up there without anybody to draft with, so the train's going to go by on the inside. Tony will be about 15 next time by. <laughs> He's going to wonder what happened. 60 laps complete, 57 to go as they come by this time. They've accomplished 159 of the 311 miles to be run. And it's Chad Little to lead this time. Mark right there in second. Chad Little leading this race today, uh, again, is, is very impressive. The folks, you know, he hadn't had a whole lot to get excited about this year. They've got a lot of wrecks, a lot of problems, so it's really good to see Chad out front. And there's Old Faithful about uh, one in third spot there, Mr. Trickle. He never ceases to amaze any of us that are in this sport. Uh, he just always gets the job done, finds himself at the front of every race. I don't have any wins in my staff. A couple of thousand, I think, this day. That's Short tracks, right. yeah. All the races that he's won throughout the years. He was really disappointed in win Milwaukee. You know, he had that race in hand pretty good, and he had a little, made a little mistake there, driver error with uh, two laps to go. It really, uh, it really hurt, hurt his feelings. And admitted it, though. Oh yeah, he was, he was the first one to admit it. He said, you know, even, the, even the best of us mess up every now and then. <laughs> Further back in the field, there's Greg Sachs McLaughlin right after him, and up on the outside of the move with the number 20, Drew Ooh. Spencer. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> the Spencer 20 and the 29 nine. are close together there. That ought to be exciting. 9th, 10th, 11th ball in there. Waltrip just in front of them. Michael Waltrip in 8th position. Hey, it's changed up front here, too. There, Dick Trickle has moved around. Mark Martin come with him with the car number 4. Uh, Jeff Purvis and Nemechek. So Martin dropped from 2nd back to 5th on that lap. Do you know that this is the first super speedway race that Chad Little has led since he led one lap at Daytona at the beginning of the season? Wow. So they have they have definitely made a big turnaround here. Well, they've been inching along over the last several races, getting closer. But last year was the wonder year for him, winning from the rear down there at Daytona, coming in here, doing that, beating Jimmy Spencer, that great finish a year ago in this very event. Of course, we heard that's the same car. When we say it's the same car, that was a Ford last year that they put Pontiac sheet metal on and a Chevrolet engine in that thing this year. So same chassis. A little bit different combination. Here goes Trickle trying to move on the outside of Chad Little. He picked up the drivers out in front of this race. This will make what, 10? And stay there. Well, I tell you, Chad is holding his own down on the inside all by himself. Ah, but coming by, got a 10th different driver leading the event. Jeff Purvis comes right with him. See, if that start line had been back here in the middle of the trial, Chad would have won that race. But since it's down here in the middle of turn, almost at turn one, Dick Trickle won that race. You're, you think that's a really big story, and you think that is one of the things that makes this track so, oh, by all so means, hard? You come off a of turn four, any other racetrack, you look in the mirror, you got it made, buddy. If you got any kind of lead at all, you say, I got this in the bag. You come off the corner here off a of turn four, look in the mirror, you say, man, the race is just starting. <laughs> Well, here's Jeff Purvis trying to be the 12th different leader today. Jeff Purvis has won here in Arco Racing. He's won here uh, before on a couple of occasions. Also won at Daytona in Arco Racing. Jeff Purvis trying to lead him down this time. You want to check right behind them. And he's won a Bush race earlier this year, too. So uh, it's no surprise he's out front. Ron Hutter power. He's had the pole here the last two years. Jeff Purvis now has the lead. gradually working his way back. Yeah, he's got a good car. It's the timing thing now, Ned, of where you're going to be when the race is over with. Position. One fuel stop. Right. Cars 
than any one of them can win. Circumstances, right? Pit stops, first one thing another. Because they're all keeping up. There's David Green back there. There's Bobby Labonte, who's been in and out of the pits a million times back there. Several good cars. Where's Terry? Is he still out there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, in that he's pack. beginning to come. Yeah, Terry. Terry's somebody you got to watch out oh, for. Oh, yeah. yeah he's, he's a sleeper. Jeff Green, he's hanging back there. We know that car runs good here. He won't do that under green, I can tell you. He's going to get him a little fuel, and that's all he's going to get if they pit under green. He hopes that everybody listens like you do. Go back to the top. <laughs> uh, just call me Bobby. <laughs> Fifty one laps remaining here in this grand national race at Talladega, Alabama. The prelude to the Die Hard 500 tomorrow at this same facility. Be with us at one o'clock Eastern when the best of the Winston Cup stars go for it. And that great annual event here every July. While you're watching Jeff Curtis, he's out in front. Nemechek has now taken over in second spot. Dick Trickle finds himself in third. Mark Martin hung out to dry on the outside, drops back to about ninth position here. Yeah, he had worked his way. He got dropped back to about fifth or sixth. He'd worked his way back up to second. Now he's back in that pack again. I think what he's doing is Michael's back there in 11th place, and he's back. He's trying to back up and get him a drafting partner because they got shook out of the draft. Most of them did, and they're going to the back, but they'll get hooked up and come back to the front. There's some sleepers back in the back of this field, too, right now, or back in the back of this pack. You got Bobby Labonte back there. There's your... There he, is. there he is, right there. Yeah, there he is. And uh, he's been in and out of the pits. It looked like they got that thing working now. And there's the point leader right there, and he's still going good. And uh, Terry Labonte's back there. Jeff Green's back there in Earnhardt's car. Uh, there's some guys back there in the back that are maybe being a little more conservative than some of the others have been. There are 21 cars in this lead draft. So yeah. any, either one of them could win this Yeah, race. there's any anybody in that pack right now has got a. Uh-oh. Uh -oh, Tony Stewart. Stewart. Is that Mark Martin? That's Mark it? Martin that he hit. Here comes another car. He was speed. running in fifth spot, back there in ninth or tenth. There's 99. And the 99 gets collected as well. Glenn Allen, the rookie. The leading rookie contender. I don't think he, he may not have hit anything, Glenn Allen. I couldn't tell. His roof flaps are up, but I don't think he hit the wall. There's Mark down there on the inside. Tony Stewart on the pit road in the 15. Mark Martin, I mean, you know, how, every time, every race here, this happens. Stewart in. David Hobbs. Well, as you can see, Tony Stewart's day is pretty much done. That car is really badly damaged. He's unbuckling. They're going to get him out of here. Oh, no, no. I okay, was uh, just talking to his owner, Harry Rainier, just a few moments ago. We were saying what an incredible future this young man had got, how quick he was and how much hope he got on him. And he also pointed out there was no writing on the side of the car, i.e. no sponsorship. What a shame. What a bad day for him. Back to you, Ken. Mark Martin limping away from car number 60. Yeah, he's limping pretty good. Now he says, I believe I'm okay. Yeah, he just yeah. needs to shake it off. Uh, you know, that's a tough moment for him and the safety worker. The driver wants a moment to get his thoughts together. Mark's so disgusted. He had a good car. And uh, right now he's real disappointed. And that safety worker is just trying to hang with him to be sure that uh, he doesn't need anything. But that's the last thing Mark wants to see or hear. Well, no one works out physically more than Mark Martin. And you saw him stumble away from that car. And he was in pain. Yeah, it's just, it stuns you, Ken. When you hit that wall like that or hit something else, it just stuns you. Back to David Hobbs with Tony Stewart. Well, I'm down here in the bits with a very disappointed Tony Stewart. What an afternoon you had. Big, big drafting on the fastest track in the world. What did it feel like? Well, 
It feels different than Indy because you don't run this close with everybody else. But, uh, you know, we had a good race car today, and, and none of these guys were going to give me a break. All the veterans shut me off every time, and I was hunting for myself. So uh, I was kind of learning how to hunt my own food, I guess, in a way. But uh, I, I don't know what happened. I went in the corner, and it got loose, and, and I couldn't catch it. You know, I didn't want to oversteer to the right too much, but it came around slow. I just I couldn't catch it. There was nothing I could do. What about more bush series? <laughs> I can't wait. The more of these, the better. I mean, th this is what it's about right now. You couldn't have had a much more exciting debut. Well, uh, you know, we, we've run, we had a good run at Milwaukee the last time, and this is the first time we've run good on a super speedway, and, and these guys poured their hearts and souls into this car this weekend, and, and it was running well. You know, I, I was drafting pretty good, and uh, just couldn't catch any breaks. You know, every time that somebody passed on the inside, and all the Winston Cup guys were helping the Winston Cup guys, and if you, as soon as I get that yellow sticker off the back of the bumper, I think we'll be in a little better shape. Well, there's a guy who's full of confidence and also full of skill. Ken? A learning experience at Talladega. Randy LaJoy, number 74. Yeah, it looks like his car is similar to Dale Jarrett's. It just won't go. He wants somebody to push him in. Dale Fishline coming up there right now to maybe give him a little bit of a push. Now, this is legal to do, folks. Uh, you can get pushed in help. Not help. during the race. The yeah, only thing is you can't get pushed in on the last lap of the race or they'll penalize you. Hey, guys, they were close to a pit stop. He could be out of gas. You they think were, so? Yeah, they were having, they were going to make open, pit open. stops here before too long, so hmm. we'll see what the deal is. Okay, we understand that that is indeed the, pro the uh, situation that he is out of gas. It's, a gas it's like a big sea line stuck yeah. in his trunk, doesn't it? <laughs> that nose stuck up there like this. Here come the pit stops. This will be the last time in unless there is another caution. 70 laps complete. There you see Purvis. There's the Tony Stewart car just sitting there all over for him. So the signboard coming out for number 14, Patty Moise. Patty Moise has had a good day. She stays right in that lead lap back in 20th spot. Here's Dick Burke. Well, Michael Waltrip is going to take at least just two tires. He's going to go for track position and just go with the outside tires. Still, it is a long stop for Michael Waltrip. He's already been here more than 20 seconds. 21.49, and he is going to take off at the tail end of the fastest cars. Chad Little out of gas in number 23. Boy, that's a shame. Well, you see what happens. They were they were out there running. They had no indication that they were out because where the fuel pickup is on these cars, as long as they were running, it was slinging the, the gas up in there. But when they slowed down and got on those high banks, then that gas ran down to the inside, to the left side of the tank. They probably got some gas in there, but got on that high bank and it ran down. They couldn't pick it up. Can't the other thing up. is, his pits was closed, too. They couldn't yeah. get into the pit lane because Mark's car was sitting down there with the safety yeah. crew, so they had to run another lap or so, and that took them out of the window. Take a look at Mark Martin's number 60. That's a hard lick. I, I don't. I didn't see Mark hit the wall, but the looks of that car, he nailed it pretty good. And banged his knee off the, uh, one of those roll bars, and you can speak well to him. More than likely, Kenny hit the steering column. That's uh, your... When you hit the wall, your knee or your leg will come over and jam into that steering column or hit the side of that steering column, and that hurts, even though we pat them up. This car being rolled back and Chad Little rolling onto pit road in number 23. Chad Little's crew waiting, and he's getting assistance from all kinds of and folks. And he's going to have to hurry or lose a lap. Let's go to the pits and Mike Joy. Chad Little in. Okay, he gets in, but the pace car is coming off of turn four. They need to put a little gas in that thing and get him fired and get him back on the way, yeah. or he's going to lose a lap. Yeah, they're, they're not trying going. to do that. They're not going to make it in there to get it to fire, and it won't fire right now. No. They're trying desperately to get him going. That's oh. a shame. That's, that's just is. exactly the kind of year this young man has yeah. had. No, that's that's just. Boy, last year at this very same time, Tim Fedewal was leading this race. And that same thing is, situation. it's Lost so it. hard to fire, Ken, because the engine's hot. And uh, it's just hard to get the fuel sucked up there and get that thing going again. He finally does now, but it's too late. The, the pace car has already gone by, so he's a lap down. He's still going to have to come back in. He didn't change any tires. They just put enough gas on it. Or somebody put some well, gas actually, in. He's coming into his pits here now. Oh, he wasn't even in his pits. No. He was just getting some help from some friends. <laughs> now, what's the ruling on that, gentlemen? Uh, that, you can't do that. <laughs> Dick? Chad was running when he came in here, so I'm really not sure what the problem was with the car, but the engine does not sound good at all. Gary Coswell is his crew chief. What's wrong with Chad's car? Well, he ran out of gas there. We were going to pit on that lap anyway, and uh, the caution came out. We thought it was going to be a good thing for us. It's about half a lap short of making it in here. Uh, almost. That's been Chad's year. You're right, Ken Squire. 
Well, the deal was, Doc, the reason he didn't know why his, he thought his car was running, he got gas back up the end of pit lane up there. Replay as to what happened here. Watch the white and red number 15. Tony Stewart just breaks away. Oh, yeah. You know what I think, Ken? I think he was trying to turn down to the inside. Oh, man. Boy, did he. Him, he and Mark. That was a hard lick on Mark. And but I think was Tony was trying to cut out from behind that car in front of him and get to the inside. That's the way it looked. And Glenn Allen, you see him spinning down on the bottom of the track in the 99. The rookie. <clears throat> Another angle. Watch well, the there see him right in the middle of those two cars. I think he was going to go to the inside, get behind Trickle, who was running pretty well, and he just turned it down too quick. Yeah, you can't turn it that quick. <laughs> no, you can't. In, in the banks at the speeds that they're running. No. And but, boy, he just hit oh. Mark. Mark said, where did that race car come from? Boy, that's a shame. That's a shame for both of them. Randy LaJoy can give us these pictures of what happened. Well, he sees the car go down on the inside. He said, where is it going to go now? He was fortunate to get right on. Boy, by. he was. A lot of Dyson going on there with the car that wasn't involved in the accident. He was one of several to be very lucky right there. And that could have been another bowling ball. 72 laps are now complete. Coming up next, live second round coverage of the Ameritech Senior Open out at Long Grove, Illinois. That's the Ameritech Senior Open next on CBS. Peter Wall's done a good uh, job today. And uh, oh, there's another guy that can't catch a break. No, he, he can't. He's done a good job. Tim Peter was only a lap down, being shown in 18th position at the present I, time. I, I don't. Now they're showing him in the lead. Yeah, I don't think he went a lap down. He's been hanging right at the tail end of that lead draft just about the whole time. And I don't. Looks like Glenn Allen, who spun in that accident, didn't lose a lap either. Let's go to Dick Burke. You're not going to believe this. Randy LaJoy was just in. There was a lot of smoke around his race car. We were trying to figure out why. The wooden floorboards had caught fire. Steve Bird, the crew chief, hit it with a CO2. The CO2 came back at him. He's just had some medical attention, leaning on a jack here, drinking some water, and trying to get his composure. What a wild few moments down here in the 74 pit. Steve Bird has had a lot of champions over the years. Now you're going to say, well, what does he mean a wooden floorboard? These are new, these cars are not made out of wood. What we do is we put an eighth inch piece of plywood right where our feet sit. And that is the best heat absorbent that you can put in a race car. It protects your feet from that hot floor and these cars are terribly hot inside. You put that piece of plywood in there and cover that with some installation and that's the best protection you can have for your feet. And, and doesn't these uh, nine and a half to one compression ratios generate more heat? A lot more heat. Cup cars. Oh yeah, a lot more heat in the tailpipe. They uh, they they don't burn the fuel as efficiently as an unlimited engine does. One of our Randy LaJoy's crew members. A little overheated. That's what happened to him. Well, that pit stop with that, uh, they had to shoot the car to put that fire out and all of that. Maybe just got over overheated or maybe breathed some of the. He probably breathed some of the, the uh, CO2. CO2, yeah. Green flags out, you guess. So, 73 laps are complete as they go back to green. Name a check out front. Make that Todd 74. Bodine. Todd Bodine, we haven't said anything about him. There he is up in second place. Nema check, Bodine, Trickle, Purvis, Green, the top five. McLaughlin, six. Mayfield up to seven. Strickland, eight. Sachs, ninth. Terry Labonte comes to tenth, and David Green to 11. You know, as the race unfolds here at the end, uh, there's going to be a lot of names we haven't called today because a lot of those guys have been in the back all day and they keep eliminating the front runners. Well, Patty Moise is up to 12th as well, Darrell. And this is one of her best racetracks. You know, she finished well here last year, and uh, Somehow, some way, I don't know how, but she stays out of trouble here and gets her a good finish. Seventh a year ago. She had a spin over on when had the Rodney Combs incident on the back stretch, but apparently didn't hit anything. The state the lead left right up in there with her. So we come by with Joe Nemechek, who started out the day up front as the pole sitter by a half second, a couple of miles an hour faster than anyone, back in front. And Dick Trickle. That 54-year-old veteran from Wisconsin in second spot. I tell you, somebody we need to keep an eye on, too, is Chad Little. You know, he lost a lap in the pits. We know that's a fast race car because he was leading the race, and he's going to be trying to get up front and get that lap back. He could be fun to watch. 75 laps complete, 76 when they come by, and 41 to go. 
he's back about uh, track position wise in about 12th or 14th spot, but he's closing up fast. Well, he's 23rd and being shown a lap down. As you see him working on Fuller, the 18th car, as he begins to sort them out and search for that front position, try to move himself around. Yeah, see, he's right at the tail end of all those fast cars, and buddy, I'm telling you, he's going to be looking for uh, openings. Well, he's found one on the outside. <laughs> there goes Chad wheeling up on the outside, going around Bobby Labonte there. That's and pretty he's still up move. there. Pretty gutsy move. He didn't even have anyone to draft with, and he just went right up there and blew a couple of cars off. What got Chad in trouble uh, most of the time last year and even this year was poor qualifying because he'd start way in the back. He's a real aggressive driver, as you can see, and he would end up getting in trouble. So we need to keep our eye on him. Front of the field, Lima check. There's one person that really doesn't care too much today, Darrell. No, uh, he's using more of his seat than anybody here. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the people haven't sat down since the race started. I don't know why they sell tickets. Watching Chad Little as he works that outside and begins to roll through traffic to try to get up from one lap down. Nemechek, Trickle, and Purvis, the front three. Boy, he's coming. Oh, yeah. But you know what? I don't think he'll make it. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> Or some names. Rick Acton is tied with Walter Morgan. Ah, Chi Chi. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. I think my looks like McLaughlin's car is smoking a little bit, Ned. He's uh, two cars in the second car. See some smoke out of that 34 car. Why am I going to the spare? Why are you putting that on spare? Why is he going to the spare? He needs to know. One, two. Test, test, test. Yeah, yeah. What was the problem? Pardon? Thank you. Yeah, well, he got he got out of, he got out of line. He was doing good. He got out. Of line. In the second round of the Ameritech Senior Open, we're tied. Rick Acton, Walter Morgan, both at seven under right now, and Chichi Rodriguez right in there, just one back. And we'll be going there right after we complete the running of this 500k Grand National Race. There you see Chad Little as he was trying to make his way through the field. He got left out in the draft and fell back a few spots. He's got to make up a lap here and then pray that there is one more caution. Let him circulate around this 2.6 and take another strike at these leaders who continue to be Nemechek, Trickle, Purvis, Bodine, and Michael Walter. The guy that really kind of, if you want to, mess Chad up was the Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy all of a sudden is turned the wick up just a little bit and he's starting to make a real strong charge toward the front. He's a white car right up here on the corner. You scream. There's Chad coming down, making it three deep through the crowd. He was making good time when he was running that high outside line. He was passing cars, taking them kind of by surprise on the outside. He dropped to the inside and uh, people started overtaking him. Fermi Sadler coming back on the track in car number one, many laps down. After that altercation, just about took the nose off that one. In the 34 car, I saw him smoking. He's off the pace. Mike McLaughlin slowing down in turn two. 
He was running 16th. A little extra air conditioning on Hermes' car today. Yeah, that's not very aerodynamic. Not good for this race track. But he just wants to make a few more laps and see if he can pick up a position or two. And Ooh, we're three wide again, then. Hold me three wide. And your brother's in the middle. Hold the pretty wheel there, bud. <laughs> oh, oh, man. He touched a little bit. Yeah, he and the Hutt Strickland. And you know, Hutt is somebody we haven't said anything about either, and he's right up in the thick of this thing. Jimmy Spencer in the number 20. Four wide. Oh, my goodness. You can tell it's getting close to showtime. Five more laps to go, but they're still going hard at it. Hear that cash register go ding ding. Yeah. Nemechek, Trickle, Bodine, Purvis, and they're all willing to wait. Those guys behind have got to get themselves situated. They're going to take a charge at that victory today. Here's the 74 down the inside, trying to work his way back in. LaJoy all the way out of this, about 10 laps to go. Now LaJoy finds himself up in eighth, and this is a track where he's done well, second to Earnhardt here once. I don't know. I thought I heard the phone ring a minute ago, and it was to Terry Labonte. I think they may have just given him his wake-up call. <laughs> There's McLaughlin on pit road. As you told you, it looked like the engine caved in on car number 34, and it's done. A tough break for him. Back up in front. They're stacking them three wide in the corner. Wow! Down on the inside, looking for that lap back is the 23 of Chad Little. On the outside, the white number 20 is Jimmy Spencer. As they squeeze him out of turn number two, and look at this car making its way to the that's bottom. Terry. It was on the outside. Yeah, that's Terry Labonte, and uh, I'm telling you, it's getting dark back there behind us, and I think that uh, his crew chief may have called him, which is his dad, Bob, and said, Terry, have you looked at the sky lately? <laughs> and then he asked him, have you looked where you are lately? And he's picking it up. Look at Chad up to uh, fourth in that line. I tell you, that's pretty impressive, mm. Ken. He came out of the pit behind every car on the racetrack, and he's worked his way right up there behind the leader. Kind of like Sterling Marlin does here. Uh, yeah. Kristen Cup race. Yeah. I'd like to know what gear they got. What <laughs> They can do some passing. Look at him. He's down there on the bottom all by himself, pulling alongside who we know. Michael's got a good car. He's led the race, and uh, there's Chad. Now, he might pay the price for getting down there like that, but they he's got to keep trying. Jason Keller, black flag coming in. There's Labonte in the five, five car. That's Terry Labonte up on the outside. We saw there. And check still out front. Cosmo nine in second. And Buddy, there's a couple oh. of good ones side by side. Chad Little and Jimmy Spencer. <laughs> and they wanted to, they'll do some racing. Jeff Purvis is pulled in behind Little. Yeah, he got shuffled in the middle there a moment ago and dropped way back in the pack. He's trying to pick back, up those positions again. Which Chad, Chad would be the man to go with yeah. because Chad's got a fast car. Chad's trying to get a lap back. Purvis just wants to lead, so that'd be the man to follow. Absolutely. There he is. If I were Jeff, I wouldn't pass him. I'd just go. He'd be he going him. right with, go Bobby, with Bobby Labonte back there in that 14th spot. That off again, on again afternoon that he's had. Oh, Michael pulled down. Smart move by him. He saw Little coming. He pulled down in front of him, got a little bit of a push, got himself uh, a position. Jimmy, Jimmy Spencer in the middle. Todd Bodine on the outside out of four, three, four wide. Ooh, this could be ugly, guys. Yeah, it could be. It could be. That's a could be right there. Yep. <laughs> Buddy, I'm telling you what, isn't it? Something going on out there we don't know about. I thought it was about 30 laps to go here. Well, maybe maybe they did look at the sky and say somebody said it's gonna run. Look, oh, don't go up, Jimmy, don't go up, Jimmy Todd. Better be careful up there, buddy. Man, look at them whip out of line like that. Wow. How wide are they there? I can't count that wide. <laughs> that scrambles for fourth. <laughs> I think that's the, that's the widest I've ever seen them at Talladega. Wow, that scares. That's the battle for fourth. Sacks down on the inside. Spencer in the middle. Todd Bodine on the outside. They're Just behind them, Fuller in the 47 on the inside. That 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 is absolutely amazing right there. <laughs> Just keep nerfing each other a little out there. I don't know why they haven't wrecked. I don't have enough bad to have them. These cars, when it, this is a super speedway. These cars go home, it looks like they've been running Martinsville, where you lean all over each other. Great racing. <laughs> I don't 
know. I, I, I don't know if I want to do this race tomorrow, next, next year or not, because it's going to make tomorrow seem even worse. Yeah, this is a great way to get yeah, to morale really the morale to run 500 miles there. Yeah, all we talked about is wrecking and running over each other, and i got to go out there and do that. Hey, how do you sleep tonight? Oh, I think that's something. Had a great <laughs> qualifying run. We started yeah. in ninth place tomorrow. Yeah, yeah I'm glad of that. <laughs> Andrew Nemechek looking on. Joe stays in this thing in front. You know, we saw Rodney Jones wife a little earlier when Rodney was in that accident and she was composed. Andrea sitting there. But I tell you, these women have got knots in their stomach and they stay in there all day long at this racetrack. CBS Sports coverage of the Talladega 500K continues after this message and a word from your local station. Greg said it looked like a World Outlaws parade lap. Yeah. <laughs> Ferguson. Yeah, he might. He might. He's got a fast race car. Mm. He might be able to do it. Well, he might. He might get some more. There you go. Ooh. Whoa. Oh, man. That's Jimmy Spencer in the 29 car. Huh? Look at that. Uh, I mean, I don't know how much of that you can do. I just don't know how you do this. Need a check. They caught him up. Where's Terry at? One laps complete, just 26 to go, and Jeff Purvis has led the surge back up onto those two leaders. Coming up next, live second round coverage of the Ameritech Senior Open from Long Grove, Illinois. That's next here on CBS Sports. I can't I tell you, I got heartburn and a headache, and I'm just watching this race. <laughs> you need to get ready to go 500 <laughs> miles tomorrow. And my, I'm, 500. I, my knees are shaking. These guys, is, I'll tell you, this is one whale of a show. I know at home you probably can't appreciate what's going on as much as we can here or being a part of all this, but this is an incredible show, folks. Nemechek still leads. Purvis has now come into second place. Todd Bodine is in the third. Michael Waltrip is in fourth. Terry Lavani is up to fifth. The sixth position belongs to Sachs and seventh to LaJoy. Here's Mike Joy. Ken, it's interesting that now Chad Little is right behind Joe Nemechek. They share the same engine builder, Lloyd McCleary, and a member of his firm has been shuttling back and forth between the two pits, looking for a little diplomacy. But remember that down a lap is Chad Little. The winner last year of this race, dramatic finish. Well, let's just think about something. Let's just assume that maybe someone had me get his lap back. He's got to come through all that traffic again to get back to where he is right now. So he's running out of time, too. But if it could happen soon, he could do it. Oh, he could do it, yeah. Well, there's uh, Chad Little's wife, Donna, looking on, scoring him. 25 laps to go, and the way he's been running, if he could pick up a caution and be leading, he could get himself back into this thing. He will through that field 
in about 10 laps there. Ken, what, you know, we see all these wives working in the pits, and we all do that because we want our wives to be a part of what we're doing. Plus, it gives them direct communication to the driver, to their husband. They know what's going on with the race car. They know what's happening, and it, it makes them feel a lot better being a part of the team and knowing firsthand what's happening out there on the racetrack. Well, Chad just got overrun by those front cars. They've moved him back. He was challenging to go back up into the lead lap on Nemechek. Now there are five cars separating him from that effort. It'll be tougher if the caution should come out now. He yep. Probably wouldn't get back in the lead but lap. He's still trying. He's right down there. He's got Greg Sachs going with him this time. Yeah, that, I, that, I wish he could have stayed up there in second place because uh, he's going to work real hard now and he's going to have to take some chances, I'm afraid, to get back up there. It's Nemechek, Purvis, Bodine, Waltrip, Levante, the front five. Sachs runs in six, LaJoy in seventh. Jimmy Spencer in eighth, Dick Trickle ninth, and Jeremy Mayfield in tenth. But Strickland stays 11th on the field with Kevin LePage back to 12th. David Green is 13th, Jeff Fuller 14th. Patty Moise in 15th position, Bobby Labonte 16th, Tim Fiedel was 17th, Jeff Green in 18th, Glenn Allen in 19th, Bobby Dodder in 20th, and Curtis Markham in 21st. Those 21 cars still on the lead lap. One lap down, Chad Booth. I believe Nemechek's starting to show his strength, Ned. Uh, he's been out front here for the last good bit, and I think he's starting to show that that car will get the job done today. He's been out front longer than anyone else has since the race started. Yes, really. he has, and he's doing it fairly comfortably. And, you know, Chad couldn't do anything with him. I don't believe anybody else can. And he's left well, they might gang, five laps. They might gang up on him, though, like they're doing right now. <laughs> Boy, and are they ganging up on him. I hate to say things like that, don't you, Ned? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, uh, we're sort of assuming that they can go the rest of the way on fuel. I'm not so sure that they can go that far on the, on the tank again. Uh, how many laps would that be? Uh, I didn't know. I don't. I don't write down the last time. But they can do. Uh, well, according to our statistician here, they stopped on seven lap 74, which would leave 43 laps. Let's go to the pits, Mike Jordan. Maybe he can fill us in a little more. Well, Ned, Mike Walter stopped with 45 laps to go, and they say that Ford will go the distance, no problem. Yeah, they will. Okay. Okay. That's uh, well over 100 miles, and I didn't know. Yeah. These engines will get about uh, five. Five and a half miles to the gallon with the restrictor plate on them, and so they should be able to make that art. They should be able to do 120 miles. Okay, take that out of the equation then. Purvis is the leader, second time he's led today. 17 lead changes among 11 drivers thus far. Tomorrow's the Die Hard 500, 1 o'clock Eastern, right here on CBS. Hope you'll be with us to enjoy it. Look at Kevin LePage in the 88 being challenged by the 44. Getting right in there, ready to mix it up. Boy, this is getting ugly at the front. Mm -hmm. They've got scattered out there for a little bit. Folks right there is the biggest them. cheerleader in NASCAR racing. Martha? Martha. This is Joe Nemechek's mother. Four wide. Whoops. Back to three. Much better, thank you. That whoops is done by a trained professional right there. <laughs> Look That's at Terry Labonte. Terry said Labonte. much about him going for the lead. I think you're right. <laughs> got that phone call. He got it, I'm telling you. Waited it out. Here comes Sachs down on the inside. And down on the inside of him was what Jeremy Mayfield and Michael Waltrip. Jeremy Mayfield to second. Michael Waltrip back to third. Sachs in fourth. Mike Joy. Ken, I'm sorry I misspoke. Michael Waltrip did stop with 45 laps to go. They say they can go 41 laps on a tank of fuel. Just 41. Oh, now, interesting. now we're muddying the formula again. <laughs> I bet you he goes 45 wheels. Yeah. <laughs> you know something we don't know? <laughs> I know these guys never tell the truth. <laughs> Terry Labonte now leads. Terry Labonte. Becomes a new leader in this race. He's had 18 lead changes among 12 drivers. Sports coverage of the Talladega 500K is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Pert Plus Shampoo and Conditioner. Great hair, no fuss.
Huh? <laughs> Is that the 29 car in front now? Yeah. That, that's his second time leading. No, second. He led earlier. Uh, Cannon and Daryl, the Chevy guys I talked to down here, now. David Green, Randy LaJoy, and uh, Trickle, they say they do not have to stop. Hmm. So either everybody's telling the truth or everybody's lying <laughs> or, or it's just yeah. having a bad day down here. I don't know what it's. Maybe they just don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, but that's probably it. But the Chevys down here say they can go the distance. I think most of them never thought it'd come down to this. <laughs> right. And it probably won't. Yeah, I don't think it will, really. CBS Sports coverage of the Talladega 500K is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Pert Plus Shampoo and Conditioner. Great hair, no fuss. Joe Nemechek has said before that he will always remember 1992 and the race at Loudoun, New Hampshire is the most memorable when he won by inches over Dale Earnhardt. That may change in the memory bank today as he leads right now with a scramble between another 12, 14 cars to decide this 500K Grand National Race at Talladega, Alabama. For the moment, Nemechek is back in front. Sachs had a shot at it for a moment. Jeremy Mayfield has pulled himself up into third spot. And Terry Labonte, who led briefly, he's now back in fourth, running in fifth. It's Jeff Purvis, followed by Todd Bodine and Michael Waltrip. Back in eighth is Dick Trickle. Then comes Jimmy Spencer, and in tenth, Kevin LePage. Well, I know nobody wants it, but these guys sure are asking for a lot of trouble. <laughs> Man, they've opened the door here a couple of times for something to happen. There's Michael Walter down on the inside with Chad a little behind him. Yeah, Michael was right up there in the second and third spot a minute ago, and he got down on the inside, and everybody went by on the outside. He's hooked up with Chad now trying to pull himself back up. Coming up, second round coverage of the Ameritech Senior Open from Long Grove, Illinois, here on CBS, and tomorrow, Die Hard 500, Jeremy Mayfield on the pole at 192 miles an hour with Jeff Gordon alongside. Then Jared Earnhardt in row two, Speed and Irvin, Burton and Martin, Darrell Waltrip and Johnny Benson. Bring them down in row five. Be with us to enjoy the action of the Die Hard tomorrow. Yeah, if you like this, it's just more of the same. Uh, the only thing is it lasts a little bit longer tomorrow. We've got 500 miles instead of the 300 today. And this one pays 400, and the one tomorrow pays well over a million. It's Winston Cup and all of that good stuff. Let's get back down to the pits for a moment. Ken, as we get down to the end of this race, fuel is becoming an issue, at least for some teams. Greg Sachs' team says, yes, they can make it on the fuel they have. Todd Bodine's crew says it's going to be a squeaker, but they think they can make it. Bob Labonte, Terry's dad, says it's going to be close, but they think they can. Purvis' team says, oh, yeah, we can make it. How many of these guys do you think are telling us the truth, Daryl? <laughs> well, I think they all are, uh, Doc. I don't think they really know how far they go because they never thought they'd come down to this. I think they figured there'd be enough cautions and things that they wouldn't have to worry about fuel mileage. A lot of these teams uh, that are not accustomed to running speedways like this really don't know how far they can go on fuel. <laughs> Boy, it's time to sweat. <laughs> Poor Martha. Mother <laughs> Nemechek. <laughs> Getting a little concerned here. Yep. She says, boy, we need to do good because we've crashed our Winston Cup car. Didn't hurt it too bad, but uh, that was a bad deal for him. Yeah, he crashed it in qualifying. Had a tire to go play. Spun it around about three times. And I guess, what did you say? He cut a brake line? No, no. Uh, it, it was, we pull the brake pucks back away from the rotors when we qualify so they won't uh, cause any extra drag. Do it with springs. And when you first hit the pedal, you don't have any uh, brakes. So you got to pump it a time or two to push the pucks out. And that's what saved him from hitting the wall over there, really, because he didn't have no brakes. He just spun around. He couldn't lock it up. On the pole, Nemechek for this race fell back. Now fights his way to the front. Sack stays with him. Mayfield stays third. Terry Labonte in fourth. Purvis fifth. Well, Joe seems to be the only car that can really kind of get back to the lead uh, at will. They do gang up on him a couple of times and pass him, but he seems to be able to get back. Ooh, 
We get a report of raindrops over here in turn four on this 2.6 mile track. And Man, there's just a couple sprinkles down here in turn one again. Nothing bad yet, Elmo's watching. Nemechek spotter up on the just roof. Just so you know, that four car is pulling the 300 here, so he's going to be able to run on the bottom better than the top. So keep an eye on him. Now that's some interesting Frank, information. Yes. Yep. 300 gear, which is a little bit lower. Most of them probably are running a 292 gear, that's which right. is a little higher. That's now, right. how would they know that? Uh, just word in the pits and, you know, talking to crew members and first one thing to another. We exchange information fairly freely about that to just let each other know. David Green in the 95, you saw him. He's in 15th spot, former Grand National Champion. Another guy that's bound to show up in Winston Cup. Michael Walker moving back around Todd Bodine. He's falling a little bit behind those first five, so he's going to have to get on with it here. That's sixth position that Michael Waltrip just took over. You know, it's interesting, Ned. That's, that that's just shows what a spotter does. He doesn't just watch the race cars go around the racetrack. Uh, he shares information. Mm -hmm. He can tell his driver when they're, uh, when they're pitting or what they've done on a pit stop or, in that case, what gear the other guy has in. Ten to go signal just went out. Still there. Boy, I don't know. I don't think Joe was uh, wanting that to happen. No, he definitely did not want that. Still there. Sachs taking over first. That'll allow Michael Walker to get yeah, up. Yeah, that's, that's going to pull that whole pack right back up there. Well, now others are racing with him. Herb is going to the inside, trying to take over fourth from Nemechek. It still gathered still them all together. Coming. Michael's car just really hadn't been as quick here in the latter part of the race as uh, it was earlier. He's had trouble keeping up. Look at Nemechek backing up. LaJoy just getting underneath him. And he falls back to seventh, not to eighth. Go, go. Yeah, she's saying, no, no, <laughs> no, no, not there, Joe. Be out front. It's going to get interesting here. Nine yeah. laps to go. It's been interesting all day, but it's now the, the money's on the line. Well, you got uh, Sachs and Mayfield right there in the front with uh, the old veteran, the sneaky old veteran, Terry Labonte, right there on their back bumper. Cale Yarbrough has said, I watched Jeremy Mayfield drive in several races. I liked what I saw. He's aggressive, and yet he's smart. He's young. Good learner. I decided he's the kind of driver I want in my car, and he has him in his car tomorrow. Whoops! Up the track Ooh. a little. Boy, that's that's. A... And Mayfield sliding back now. Look, Tom Bodine come down on the inside. He took advantage of that. And Randy LaJoy coming right with him. And here comes Terry Labonte. Terry Labonte up on the outside, wheeling around second place. Gets around Todd Bodine and goes for the leader. Sandy Jones up there looking on for Greg Sachs. That's his crew chief. Sachs leading. Now Labonte has hung out on the outside. Yeah, and that green car is, uh, of course, a lap down car of Chad Little. He can help somebody, and he can hurt somebody. Yep. Which, oh, oh, here we go. Yeah, we Todd Bodine. Ooh, bad one. Bad. Lap 109. Let's see who's going to win the race back. This racing could be, back to the line, and this could be it. This could be it. Yellow is out. Field comes crashing out of turn four and down to the trioval they come. They're dicing for position, Chad Little, and they're trying to get a lap back. Sachs got the lead. And LaJoy came up the inside for second. Boy, big move by LaJoy. The 81 of Todd Bodine. Nemechek Resting got back the in turn three. He hit that wall hard down yes, on the sir. inside, right on the left front corner. That's a, you see him moving around. You see him, see his arm there. He's, well, he takes his that, helmet off. Yeah. That's his helmet hanging yeah. on the hook there. Oh, that's good news. So Boy, uh, now he's coming out of it. <laughs> he's even got his hat on it. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, oh, I was concerned for him for yeah. where he, the way he hit that wall on the left side. Yeah. Nine career wins for Todd Bodine, taking a deep breath after his 120th start in Grand National Racing ends like this. Oh, these are incredible machines. These are the Winston Cup and Bush Series cars are that they can take the kind of lickings they do and the guy gets out with his hat on. The third place finisher in this event back in 1992. Look again at what happens to Todd Bodine. Just really jockeying for position here, trying to trying to make a move to the uh, inside to get underneath Sachs so he could get the lead and uh, just lost it. He might have had a little bit of a tap from uh, LaJoy there from the back. I don't know. We'd have to look at it. Look at it again. Angle. 
but he shot out of there pretty quickly. He did. I think that the, they both were making the same move. I think another angle may tell us the story there. OK, there here he comes. Joy. Yes, right there. Just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Didn't yeah. take much Yeah. because he was making that left hand turn anyway and just yeah. a little bit of a of a nudge. And look mm. up in the air. It goes back down. It was similar to Bill Elliott's accident here when it went up in there and came back down and broke yeah. the femur. Yeah, broke Bill hit on, Bill hit on driver's side, hit yeah. the earth. Yeah. And then the other good thing there, that ground is wet back there. Yes. It's been raining and that, that took a little cushion. Okay, we'll look from LaJoy's car now and uh, see if we can tell any more. There you see the bump. Yeah, just a yeah. little nudge. I don't know if LaJoy was not expecting him to pull out like that or uh, what happened there. Maybe they were going to go together. I'm not sure. I couldn't see any hand signals. But we see the result. Tough break. We knew that that it was going to get tight here in these last few races. There's going to be a lot of things happening. 111 complete. Well, Six to go. Now we'll have a drag race. Basically, I mean, there'll be what, maybe two or three laps to go. And guys have got time to get their composure together here now and start thinking about what am I going to do to win this race? Now, what you've got to think about, this is going to be a one hour practice session for Winston Cup upcoming. After what you've seen out here today, what's going to be on your mind when you get out here and sort that <laughs> number 17 out for tomorrow's race? I got to tell you, Ken, I'm going to tell the guy it's going to take me back to the garage to take the long way home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be in any hurry to get down there. <laughs> Fellas, while we're under this caution, we need to say hello to Thurman Huggins, who's in the hospital. Thurman is the uh, man that heads up the distribution for Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company in Winston Cup Racing and has been a real mainstay and a lot of help to a lot of people in this sport and uh, wish him well. Yeah, and, uh, was it Lewis Clemens? Lewis Clemens yeah. passed away, and, and I know that there are many fans out there that will remember Lewis. He was a crew chief on Rex White's car when Rex won the championship in 1960. And after Rex retired, Lewis retired from active act duty in the Winston Cup Series, and then he, he became an engineer for General Motors. Yeah, he, he was did. from up in your part of the country, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, he's from Owensboro. Owensboro. He and his brother, uh, Crawford, and uh, they were great mechanics. G.C. Spencer, they all moved south at the same time and had a pretty good impact on uh, NASCAR racing. Souvenir collectors here today. Hey, and tomorrow, <laughs> more souvenirs, 1 o'clock. Yeah. I, uh, I don't have much of a comment about that. Well, <laughs> no, I hope they're not. I tell you one thing, though, Sterling Marlin. I don't know where he qualified. I know he's behind us, but he'll be the guy to beat tomorrow. That car is incredibly fast here at Daytona and Talladega. And he's going for three in a row. The only other guy that ever has done it's Buddy Baker. He's going to join us in the booth tomorrow. Golf is coming up next today. The Ameritech Senior Open. Buddy Baker, who won it uh, three times back to back, going to try. We'll see if we can get uh, Sterling Marlin to do three tomorrow. And tonight on CBS, Dr. Quinn, medicine woman, touched by an angel, and Walker, Texas Ranger. That's all tonight. One lap, and they're going to turn them loose. And there will be four laps to go when they turn them loose. And uh, Chad Little came into the pits. I, I guess I'm not sure what he did. I just saw him coming out. I guess he took on some tires, maybe. I think he. Uh, I know he took on fuel, and maybe it was just a safety situation uh, since he was already a lap down anyway, and and uh, is going to be able to go back up there basically where he was because Daryl, there are only two cars that are one lap down. Yeah. So, you know, got lots of cars that are out of the race. Oh, yeah, but you know what, Ned? It's a 10 lap rule. Oh, that's right. He, he can't to. go to the front. He'll have to go yep. single file. Good point. And that leaves him in 21st. To have a car that's that good, you can run right up there with the leaders, and no matter what, you're relegated to 21st. Yeah. yeah, and so he had nothing to lose by coming in and, and topping off in fuel so that yeah. he don't run out. He's, he's the only light guy that's one lap down. So. <laughs> well, and then not only that, but if you've already run out of fuel and put yourself in the position yeah. he's in, you sure don't want to run out again. <laughs> now, that'd be embarrassing. Wouldn't it? Let's review those uh, top 20, the ones in the lead lap. Dodder back there in 20th. Markham 19th, and you have Patty Moise in 18th, Allen is 17th, Fidoa in the uh, number 40 is 16th, and Kevin LePage is in 15th there. And in 14th is Jeff Green, David Green is in 13th, Hutt Strickland 12th, Jeff Fuller is 11th, Bobby Labonte in 10th, Jeff Purvis in 9th, and you've got Michael Waltrip in 8th, Trickle, Terry Labonte in 6th, and then the top five, which are Greg Sachs, Randall LaJoy, Joe Nemechek, 
Jeremy Mayfield and Jimmy Spencer. There are the top five. Sachs will lead them down with Joy right behind them, followed by Pole Sitter, Nemechek, then Mayfield, Spencer. Any speculation from either of you experts as to how this one's going to be resolved? I put my money on Nemechek. All right, Nemechek, where are you at, at, Ned? Well, I don't think all the action's over with yet. I think it's <laughs> going to get exciting these last few laps, and uh, I think Nemechek uh, certainly sitting in great position there. He had dropped back seventh or eighth, and now back up to third. There's a green flag wave, so they get on with it one more time. we got four laps to go, and the reason I say Nemechek's because he's had the ability to get to the front better than most people have. And remember, that takes about a full lap to get to speed, as Ned pointed out earlier this afternoon. Boy, a terrible restart for yeah. the, you know, the first three or four got away good, but Michael and the rest of them, they really lost a lot of ground. And they scattered I, all over in the back straightaway. I think uh, Trickle or somebody didn't get something off happened there. Yeah, yeah. They, they maybe missed a shift or just didn't go, but uh, something happened to spread them out like that. Okay, it might have been tearing the body that didn't get a, a good start there, and, and it uh, slowed everybody else down. As a result, you see three cars have pulled away. Yeah, you can't pass to get the start finish line. Only on the right side, and of course, everybody protects that up against the wall. So down we come with Greg Sachs in the lead. In second, Randy LaJoy. Right where he was, what was it, 92, when he fought it out with Earnhardt in the finish. Nima checked in third. Mayfield about 12, 15 car lengths back. In that fourth spot, and he's being challenged back there. Meanwhile, sorting him out. See the 88. He's trying to pick up some spots, but it's all over that far back for him. There's a bump on the back straightaway. As they fight for position. Michael Walter trying to gather some ground here. That was Jeremy Mayfield and Michael, and I'll tell you, it ticked Michael off, I can tell you that. Because <laughs> I almost thought he was going to do something he might regret. Leaders. Sachs coming by with LaJoy and Nemechek and the rest of the field. Terry Labonte made a great run down the inside. Now he has his brother Bobby. The first time they've, we've seen them right together today, but they're running but in fourth and fifth there now. So they'll try to chase. They'll hook up together and try to chase down those front three that are running by themselves out front. A couple of laps to go to the Labonte brothers. About 15, Carl, call it 20 back to the Labonte brothers running in fourth and fifth. Terry in fourth. Bobby in fifth. Sachs crew looking on. Darrell, uh, when do you make your knee move here? Now, if your name check sit there, if he has the car to do it, when do you make that move? The problem you got, Ned, is when you make the move, those three guys, one of those two guys, the three move out, it's going to pull the rest of the, like Labonte and them are back there close enough, they'll suck them right up there to them, so you end up having to race five or six cars. So you need to wait till you come off turn four if you can and do it through the trial, and that way you got a chance to at least finish the second. Riding with the Bell South car for a moment. Joe Nemechek in third. Greg Sachs looking for his first grand national victory. White flag is out and one to go. All right, now here's where it starts nail biting out. You asked that question, then what do I do? Well, here we go. We'll find out. <laughs> Nemechek to the inside. That's where we're going to go. Nemechek for second spot. Closing up on Sachs. He's got second. Now, if uh, Joy is smart, he'll push him along here and they'll work on. Now look at Sachs. Sachs he's driving. His, yeah, he's driving to his rear view mirror. He's going to go everywhere Nemechek's going to go. Watch it. If he doesn't get him here pretty quick, then uh, Sachs might be able to hold him off. Sachs throwing the block as it came out oh, of two. Oh, he did. Big time block. Nemechek pulling up. It's going to be a, it's going to be a two car shootout here, and it's just he, he Nemechek be... fakes to the outs <laughs> to the inside. Sachs has just got his. He's got his. He's got him covered. He ain't going to let him by. Here they come, down to the line. And it's going to be Greg Sachs in first. Nemechek in second. The joint's going to come across in third. Terry Labonte in fourth. And Bobby Labonte in fifth. Well, I want to tell you something. You can say what you want to about, you know, blocking and doing all that, but that was a masterful job of keeping a guy behind you because Nemechek is definitely quicker. And Sachs just got his number and stayed right in front of him the whole way. 21 lead changes among 12 drivers. You think that would have stood up against a guy like Earnhardt? Uh, he'd be upside down like Rusty was over <laughs> here a couple of years ago. So Greg Sachs has done it. That's his 14th Grand National career start and his first win in this series. You know yeah. what? He won that race going down the back straightaway, actually, yeah. because uh, when he couldn't, when Nemechek couldn't get by him down the back, uh, he pretty well had him. Greg Sachs victorious. We'll give you a look at the final order here. Again, the Labontes come across. 
Terry Labonte getting fourth. Michael Waltrip pulled back in there again, too, and gave it a ride. Made a great run on that last lap. I told you incorrectly. I think they dropped Bobby back some in that finish for sure. Jeff Purvis, Dick Trickle. Yeah, they, they pushed him back in those last moments in that last corner. They were running fourth and fifth, and he ends up well out of it. So it's Sachs race today. Nemechek is in second. Here's the conversation right now. Michael Waltrip pulls up in the 12 car after he had a great ride out here. What they're doing there now is checking the spoilers on the cars to be sure that they're still up as much as they've. Yeah, the 45 degrees, that's what they're supposed to be, and they check them, and they better be there. Coming up golf this afternoon, there's Greg Sachs. He's going to start 34th in the Die Hard 500 tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern here on CBS. Greg Sachs has won it today. <laughs> the Ameritech coming up next. So for Ned Jarrett, Daryl Waltrip, Mike Joy, David Hobbs, and Dick Bergren, Ken Squire saying so long from the Talladega Super Speedway where Greg Sachs has won the Talladega 500K. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. Well, Greg Sachs, the day started a little roughly. You and Phil Parsons got together, and you came back through the field. And what a job of holding those guys off at the finish. What a day. Wow, it was a terrific car, this WCW Chevrolet. Sandy Jones, all the guys, Gary Bechtel, this whole WCW team. What a great job, a tribute. You know, when they talked to me about coming in this car, all I asked for, I didn't care about. You all know this story, race to race deal. I care none about a contract. I want to get right here. And we have done it. Yeah, woo! Tell me how you held him off on the last lap. Well, it didn't matter which way he went. That's where I was going. And Joe knew it. He gave me a thumbs up afterwards, and that was the way he raced at Talladega. How about the first incident of the day with Phil Parsons? What happened? Well, Joe and uh, um, Phil and Joe, as a matter of fact, were drafted to the inside three wide going into three. And Joe lifted. And I tried to lift with Phil. I even waved off to Joe. He saw me. He checked up. And Phil just come up a little quick, whatever. We got together in the air, and he went around. Tough break for Phil. I hope he's all right. But uh, I'm sure glad it's WCW cars and... Victory Circle. Congratulations. Thank you. Woo! Can't have flakes. Saturday's racing from Talladega, Bush Grand National Series, delayed by rain. They'd get him fired up, 20 laps in on the straightaway. Greg Sachs clipping into Phil Parsons. Parsons is going for a run. He's breaking up. Check it out. We see it from Parsons' in-car camera momentarily here. 92, Larry Pearson comes out of nowhere. He drills him, and Parsons was all done for the day. More trouble on the straightaway. Hermie Sadler. Sadler trying to fight through the debris. Got through most of it, but didn't get through all of it like that. That was Rodney Combs. Sadler gets sent spinning. Combs out of the race. Sadler had some big problems inside his car. You'll see the smoke coming from all over the place. But somehow they, they got the fire extinguished. He would return. The caution's out. And we got a truck and tractor pull going on. Truly now, Dale Jarrett, he has stalled with ignition problems. And he just need a little push driving in the Band-Aid. He got to the pit. Just over 20 laps to go. Joe Nemechek, he's your man, he's your leader. But Jeff Purvis wants him, so does Todd Bodine. And Nemechek's going backwards. And his mother, Martha, rooting him on, saying, stay up there. Ten laps to go, Nemechek is right back in there with that kind of encouragement. But Nemechek goes a bit wide. And Greg Sachs moving into the lead. Nemechek way back to seventh. Mom just flat out mad at this point. Eight laps to go. Randy LaJoy's running in third. He bumps Todd Bodine. Bodine gets airborne, and he's got problems coming to the infield, smashing up against the inside. He was not hurt, 
but he was out of the race. His car was beaten up. To the final lap, it's Greg Sack on the lead. Nemechek, he's back up to second. Mom had yelled at him. There's his wife, Andrea, just praying that something will happen, but it wouldn't because Sacks would hold off Nemechek in the final turn, and he wins for the first time in Bush Grand National Racing. The points go like this. David Green still in the lead with his 10th place on Saturday, and Randall Joy's third make him a tighter first place leader. Make that rather Randall Joy tighter in second, just 44 points down. Jason Keller moved forward into the sixth position. On now to the Craftsman Truck Series. Moving past Jack Sprague after Saturday's race, he grabs the second spot, and Dave Resendez, he follows in fourth. Up next on RPM tonight, headed to Talladega for Sunday's racing. Not a pretty scene for Dale Earnhardt, involved in maybe the most serious wreck of his career. John Kernan, Benny Parsons, Jerry Punch, Bill Weber, everybody, they're all there. And now the mess, Talladega. This is the aftermath of a huge wreck on lap 117. There's Sterling Marlin's car. It was beaten up very badly. And maybe the worst wreck in Dale Earnhardt's illustrious career. He was taken away to a hospital, a possible broken sternum or shoulder. Have you been able to talk to Dale yet, Bobby? Uh, we haven't, but we just got confirmation that he's got a broke uh, shoulder. So, uh... They're talking about lifting him out of here maybe right now and taking him over to Birmingham for possible surgery. It just depends on what the doctors there feel is the extent of his injuries. I was on the outside of Dale, and uh, next thing I know I'm turned into, I turned, hunt. somebody hung me in the left ear, turned me in the three car, we both hit the wall head on. I think it was 28 car, so uh, that's about all I know. Well, I don't know, you know, they were racing up there and got turned around and headed straight for the wall. I thought I had it missed, and I, a tire came off one of those cars and just centered the front of my car, and it got hung up under the car with the transmission and drive shaft out. Tough place to race, isn't that for you guys? I guess you could call it. That's a nice way to put it. It's a shame to have to race like this. But you got to use the brake and you got to let off the gas a little bit every lap. And if it takes one guy that doesn't do that, then you got this mess right here. Well, I'm sure he'll probably be at Indianapolis next Saturday and hopefully maybe he, we can get up there and win that thing back to back. We'll just have to kind of see where he's at. You know, it all depends on his health. That's more important than, you know, even what we're trying to